Zimasa, Vabaza, Mustafa, I'd like to welcome you officially to the panel show sure again. John Usiri. Ah, ah Usiri is listening to Inda Bazeto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome officially again, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm really honored to have you. I wanted to have you as soon as you left last time because mm. you are a talking machine. And to people that were listening, you are a teaching machine. So there was a lot of game mm. you were dropping. I want to tell you officially in front of your face, mm. um, you're the one guy I think in this country that I'm really watching and I admire very much. Thank in you, In terms sir. of the alternative online space. Thank you, sir. The research, the information, the education, the difference in models, um, the traveling, mm. the exposure to things. A lot of people try to compare us with a whole lot of other people online. Mm. And some of us are different. You yeah. and I spoke about this last time, Curious yeah. Minds. Yeah. And we get compared to people unfairly considering that we speak to different audiences yeah. who bring a different vibe. I love ed education. Yeah. I love information. Knowledge. I love stats. Mm. And if we were to do a like for like, I'm probably hitting like 60% and you're like at a 98%. So from, from me as an official fan, bro, thank you so much for the work you do. Here's something interesting. Um, highly, highly educational. Um, I and that. if ever we do cross over to mainstream mm. or mainstream is willing to work with us or something, mm. I think you must be one of the first people that they have to take and they must give you like full <laughs> license to do whatever you want. Caesar and Paul Walsh is pretty dope, but mm. I'm 65. Caesar's is probably at an 85 you're like at a 98 and I know you can go even further. So from me to you, I admire the work you're doing. Thank you put you, people like myself under pressure because we like watching international guys. Mm. And for a South African guy, for a black gent, for an African gent, you're fucking shooting the lights out, bro. I appreciate you and I, I love you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, bro. I love your, you, you. I love what you do. I love um, this platform you're creating. And I just want to kind of jump into that thing of saying, we know there is no longer mainstream. I think there is media now. And I believe that we are now not even on the cusp. We've crossed over, right? Where it doesn't matter. It, last week, right? Even in the US, the most mature media market, mm -hmm. right? On Twitter, or oh, it's X, on X, right? Tucker Carlson got 200 million people to watch at the exact same time that there was a Republican debate on um, mainstream media. He got 200 people to watch on Twitter, on, please, on please, X, bro. Please stop right there. Please hit that number again, because I think you made a mistake. Two, 200 million people. 200 million people. 200 million You realize people. South Africa's got 60 million. Yes. We're this watching is, on Twitter X. Yes. On Tucker Fuck. Carlson's actual show. Has there ever been a show? Like, what does the Super Bowl uh, pull? 200 million. I think the Super Bowl at times will do like 200 to 500. Jesus. I think you can check the actual sort of like. Nah, go for it. Sorry for disturbing. No, no worries. And we are now in a, we are now in an age where it doesn't really matter. Right? 113 million yes. is the Super Bowl. 113 you million. You see, you see what I mean? And you're telling me Tucker you Carlson I mean? pulled 200 million yes. on now, X. Now the only thing that must change, right? <sighs> and is changing is that ad dollars need to find their way and they are but they it'll take a little bit of time will go to where the eyeballs are yeah the, the 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 corporates don't care they want the eyes and if the eyes are 200 of them are on x they want the 200 million eyes on x this is this is so it's not whether or not mainstream media or what there's media it just okay. happens to be delivered in different ways, shapes, and forms. Do you, do you think we need to kill this? A lot of people have got this mainstream versus social media argument. Mm. And the argument is mostly around censored, mm. uncensored, swearing. Mm. Like South Africa, have got the BCCSA, yeah. which doesn't represent the people. Because realistically, if the people had to choose, they'd be like, go as raw as possible without yeah. breaching the constitution. Yeah. Um, are you saying we need to rewire our thinking away from mainstream and social and just yeah. be like, guys, this is media. Media. It's That's it. So I just chose to watch Instagram yeah. versus SAPC. I chose to watch YouTube yeah. versus ETV. And, and that's it. It's just platform and it's fine. 100%. And the, and the grip, rules behind it? The grip, the grip on uh, conversations and how conversations are held globally has changed forever. You no long, no one has a, this grip right, on the world in terms of how information is flowing. But 
remember, we are still in a courtyard that is governed by the platforms that create these things. So then that the next true. step, the next step will be to say, how do we create a channel? Because remember, you must still be found. People must still find, and they find you on YouTube, okay. which is still a courtyard, yeah, yeah. right? That is governed, that has rules, that has Uman Jinglani, who says, yeah. mm -mm, not that thing, who demonetizes you. Yeah. So the next step for media will be, how do we truly go independent? Because this is independent media, but how do we truly go independent and monetize that to keep that system running? And that's where it will eventually get to. So, and the rules behind that are going to be very interesting because I watched uh, one of the one of the guys that I consider to be really great sort of content creators, and I, I aspire to get to that type of level of of I would say video journalism or social economic conversations, which is Johnny Harris, right? I don't know who that is. Um, Johnny Harris. Johnny Harris, yeah. Okay. And Johnny Harris had a very interesting conversation or a video piece about what Joe Rogan represents, right? And you know, the last time I was That's here, I guy. said. Yeah. I watched that video yesterday. Yes, that's Johnny Harris, okay. right? I didn't and, know his name. And he says, as much as he disagrees with it, we must have contrarian views being aired on one platform so that we can make a decision based off the counter, the balance, the balance of, of, of conversations and debates and arguments. Yeah. And that is key because polarization, right, is what is causing a lot of disagreements with people. Right. You feel like you're right because you've been fed a particular thing. 100%. It's how it's why some people understand a simple matter around BRICS or China differently from other people. Mm -hmm. Right. And even in, in, in this world that we live in, information is so powerful. And if you're only given one part of it, right, from mm -hmm. a different set of eyes and a different set of editing and cutting room floors, you're going to see the world in a very particular way. And if we don't get the opportunity to have platforms that center everything, whether or not you agree or disagree with what this mm. person is saying, hear them out. Is the, is the argument to have a separate platform that is balanced? Because I, I was going to say the whole point of being polarizing and binary yeah. makes money. Yes. The it reason does, we must be divided 100%, and fight. 100%. The reason capitalists want you and your wife and your child to not mm. get along. Yeah. Is because they get to sell three properties 100%. and three cars 100%. versus one. Hundred percent. So we divide you because we want you to consume American content. Yes. Only. Yes. So are you arguing? Are you and Johnny arguing for a separate platform that is balanced, or are you saying no? We just want one platform that is balanced. So, so you're so going to get a want, lot of pushback. Firstly, I want more platforms. Okay. I want more. So it, 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 yes, grouping people together is great, but. I want people of different views to group together onto platforms. I want more differing views so that we can argue out what, what the best way forward is. A lot of people don't want to hear the other side. Of course. And you found that even in the world, even with right wing politics coming at, coming to the fore a lot more openly now, you're seeing that people are saying, but they are wrong. And I don't I don't get that, mm -hmm. right? You speak, they speak, no, you're never on the same platform to sure. actually truly discuss these things. That's why one of some of the largest shows that I watched are when someone like a Candace Owens, right, will go onto a a, a, a liberal platform. Mm. It's when somebody like, uh, who's that blonde lady? I keep forgetting her name. She went on to Trevor Noah's show, right? I don't know. The blonde, show. blue lady, blue eyed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't know much. Well, <laughs> no, because she's pretty and I remember Trevor hit at her quite a bit. <laughs> yes. So, so I just wanted to say Tucker Carlson fucking hit 236 million views. Yes. On X. So, it so is the, fucking I mean, insane. If you go check what the Republican debate did, right? You'll probably yeah. find that they maybe did a tenth of that. Maybe. And I'm and I'm being really, really like generous to them. Yeah. But the world now exists in a platform where we can have different voices. But the 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 fundamentals of this thing, Penwell, is that we exist in this world that is created. So remember, you've got to understand how the internet is layered, right? There, yeah. are, there are certain levels. There's like eight levels to the internet or whatever. We are still congregating in town squares where we are told at the gate what it is we can say and can't say. Yeah. Even though that town square holds, let's say, a billion people like Meta, right? Mm -hmm. We're still told what we can and can't say. So few, few platforms break my heart more than Meta, but please carry on. And, and, and that in its entirety is what has created right and and allowed for more of these places to exist so that people Correct. can have now the conversation around it is when do we get this conversions of this metaverse for for lack of a better word yeah. right when <laughs> we dope. can when you can post something and it'll appear on reddit 
on X, on meta platforms, on your WhatsApp status, on your whatnot. That's the true town square, right? But then remember, all of these places have d- different T's and C's, right? Yeah, yeah. So the inter- and also remember, the pipeline of the internet is maybe like 10 to 12 companies that actually run the infrastructure. And then we've got to ask ourselves, who are the, con- the, the countries and companies that are running the actual infrastructure of how we communicate on this planet? Do you think you're naive? You sound you sound like me, and it sounds naive. Uh, I don't think I'm naive. I think I know too much. In fact, I think I think my brain it it burgeons from the fact that I, I, I know too much. I connect the world. Like I actually don't just read one story for the sake of oh this the the internet cable uh, that connects South Africa broke last week or the two weeks ago or whenever, and I go mm, okay that could be a normal break. Could be people actually don't even but, know what that means, eh? But, Sorry, I'll, I'll allow yeah. you to explain that. And I want to hear your thoughts on... Mm. Do I really want to hear your thoughts? I don't want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> I want us to actually get on to the business of the day. Sure. Julius Malima and the EFF chanted, sang, Dubli Bonu. Sure. Uh, Benny Johnson, or whatever the guy's name is from America, went and said something about a black political party. Yeah. Uh, they're calling for white genocide. Elon Musk jumped on, tagged Cyril Ramaphosa. It became a thing. And in that week of that storm... Um, I realized that I, I, I have become very naive. Yeah. And even yesterday on Twitter, I was just reminded that people are racist. Mm. People are polarized. Yeah. Um, it may not ever change, at least not in the next hundred years. Mm. Mm. What mm. you're asking for in terms of balance is really great. Yeah. But historically in the world, people have always fought mm. different ideologies and they've always used propaganda and they've always used war. Yeah. And the idea that you're craving for mm is an idea that is quite elitist, it's nuanced, it's yeah. for an intelligent brain, yeah. and it's something that the people that run the world are vehemently against. Mm. It'll always be us versus them because it is the only way we can retain power because once you gray the area, that's when merit comes up. Mm. And once you bring up merit, you can never win. We're not starting you, from the same block. You can there. never win when you bring up merit because if you tell your child, find the best father, it'll never be you. Mm. If you... If white people in this country say, go for the most talented, it'll never be them. Mm. If America says, find the most technological, it'll ne- so they're like, we will never have power if we go for merit. Mm. So we need to use propaganda and war. And it's the thing that's kept us going. So the idea of a balanced platform, they know. Yeah. They know what a balanced platform is. They yeah. know at the highest levels yeah. that China and Russia are not what they claim they are. But they're like, if we ever let it slip, yeah. if the Christians are like, guys, look at Islam. Mm. Guys, look at Buddhism. You know, mm. it's actually advanced. It's like, but then we lose everything. Mm. We lose any little everything ounce we've of created. power. Everything we've created. Cyril and Julius live in Hyde Park. Mm. If they were to be like, guys, we live, we'd never live in ANC, EFF run wards. Never. Are, you, are we fucking mad? They can't say that. That's actually quite awkward. Sorry, I was just asking if you if if you think you are naive like me, but I want to hear. We can speak about bricks, or you can yeah. share let's, your let's, views yeah, on let me Julius. Share my views. So, Julius so I Elon. think so. I I saw that thing happen, and and I was like mm, sideshow. So I'm very much these days, right? The the reason why I'm able to also kind of maybe at times deliver a different type of conversation to people, right? Is because I like fact based things. And we we must agree on this thing. We must agree on this thing. This genocide on farmers thing is not a real thing. I Correct. want to say this. It's not a real thing. The stats do not support it. They do not support it. And nobody has brought this. It is a feeling. But I don't negate the feeling that poor farmers have towards this scourge that is affecting them as farmers. Yeah. I don't I don't think it's it's but I'm saying the word genocide is a bit tricky to me because we know what genocides are mm-hmm. and it's not that. But they want to increase the volume, they want to crank up the volume on what is happening. And I also don't take that away from them because we live in a world where voices that are loud that are shocking will create the most amount of buzz and hype and eyeballs and ears. Sure. So I'm not against that. But what I'm saying is they must understand that they are fueling a lot of the discourse that happens around themselves as farmers. They are fueling it because the average person looks at it and says, this is not a real thing. 
This is not a real thing because whenever the stats are put into the thing, are put in front of people, they then say, ah, but this thing. Yeah, right so now, the Americans refuse to look at the stats. Elon everybody. Musk has not retracted. I saw Tristan Tate tweeted yeah. something about black people making whites uncomfortable and it's dangerous. And I'm like, the propaganda is yes. enormous. And what's meant to happen for the average person, you're mm. meant to be like, if Americans can be so ignorant mm. and if the biggest news platforms can lie yes. blatantly about something we know, yes. what does it say about everything we're fed about America, That's all. about Europe, That's all. about Asia? That's all. But the average person won't, which is why voices yes. like yourself become important to be like, guys, listen, if you live in South Africa and you know this bullshit, yeah. I'm begging you, Speak up. next time yeah. you hear information from them, question it as much as you're saying. These are the That's statistics. BS. These are the statistics. So for me, I think that because I live in that world of, let me quickly fact check this thing, mm. right? I don't buy into it. I know when I see a sideshow, guys, that I've been in media for a very long time now. Yeah. I know when I see a sideshow. I know when we're being distracted, right? Yeah. It takes a long time for people to kind of see to kind of see it. There's things in the world that happen and you go, why is that thing the number one topic yeah. right now? Five people in a submarine. They, how is that the number one thing we're talking about right now? Yeah. If you look at the Western, and getting onto our topic now, if you look at the Western coverage of the BRICS summit from... Friday till today, Penwell, mm. and you read just that. I'm talking The Guardian. I'm talking Reuters. I'm talking CNN. Go read those articles. Mm. There's a difference between balance and pushing a narrative. Correct. There's a difference because balance will tell you, okay, one, two, three, four, and but there's also five, six, seven, eight. Mm. Those people are straight up saying, ah, this thing it won't, it won't affect anything, it won't do anything. Sure. It won't, nah, don't worry about this, this BRICS thing. But because remember, they know their audience. They know who they're talking to. They're talking to, um, they're talking to a hamstrung UK economy that's struggling. They're talking to an, a US economy that is closing down mom and pop shops, that is closing down big retail shops. Mm. Hundreds of shops, not like hundred malls are going to like likely go out of go out of style in mm. America. So so this is these are the people that are dealing with with this. They, People in America now have to get a third job. Mm. This is the reality that they faced with, right? So while this is happening, they say, no, no, don't worry about that thing. It's not a sure. real thing. If you look at the narrative being cast now, look this week. Mm. So what's happened around, um, and now, now I'm getting very, very high level. If you look at how news cycles are created, look now this week, everybody on YouTube is starting to speak about China and the Evergrande housing crisis that's happening there. All of them will speak about it and you will all hear about it from mm -hmm. now and at least for the next two to three weeks. You will hear about the, the, the housing bubble in China. You're going to hear about the financial markets in China. You're going to hear about people in China and how they are suddenly stretched and the middle class is, is under, is shaky or something like that. You're going to find that this is important for them post BRICS. Mm -hmm. We must... We must push a narrative that says that their most, their strongest partner within this new block is actually is actually un, is, is threatened. Yeah, they're under pressure. They they won't be able to hold to hold on. This is important for them. Remember, their people, they are their platforms like TikTok that they are banning not for what they're saying they're going to ban TikTok for. They're banning them for the truth. Yes, there's a lot of conspiracy on TikTok. There's a lot of just nonsense. But there's a lot of good. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people just giving you an alternative. Yeah. You get to understand real life. You get to understand that there's a mom somewhere in, in Wisconsin who's crying and saying, I can't pay my rent. I, I want to put bookmarks because we might not get yeah. to them. You spoke about the internet cable yes. being switched off. Yeah. If we don't get to it, I just want it bookmarked. Um, my disappointment with Meta, mm. specifically Facebook and Instagram mm. and how... Mark Zuckerberg has become a guy I no longer admire the way I used to. Um, okay. And then the, the other thing I wanted to speak about was the regulation. Yeah. Um, we spoke about the BCCSA. You were yeah. speaking about how these platforms are about YouTube. Yeah. And one of the things I've said in the past is that over time, it's it's going to get more strict. Yeah. Um, and I maybe at some point would like to hear your, your yeah. thoughts on that. You, you don't have to, but I'm yeah. bookmarking it. Yeah. I want to say this, and this is the, the talk about naivety yeah you watch some of these american movies and there's this uh southern 
Yeah. Texas yeah. ranch Texas. owner who Texas. owns a shotgun. The bigger and bigger in Texas. <laughs> and when uh, some person from the government comes to his gate, he shoots at their feet. Yeah. yeah. Get the hell off my property. property. What property. <laughs> Uh, I think of that and then I think of Brad Pitt's character in a movie called The Big Short yeah. where he used to be a trader and now yeah. he's gone off grid. Yeah. And you watch The Matrix and as I get greatest older, I'm like... Movie, greatest I, movie of our time. Eh? It's as, probably the greatest as, movie as of our time. As a 36-year-old, it's the greatest movie I've ever watched. Then I think of The Matrix and maybe the last reference is going to be the, the mini docu-series yeah. How to Become a Tyrant yeah. or something on Netflix. Yeah. It's probably one of my favorite. And I'm like, am I going to turn into one of those old people that sound crazy? Mm. Where when young people are like, but this is what's happening. I'm like, it's all mm. bullshit. Yeah. It's all propaganda. Yeah. I want to go off grid. I want to get as far away from this crazy system as possible because yeah. the people are sheep. The guys at the top lead them to the slaughter. And I can see it. And why the fuck can you guys not see it? And I sound crazy. So I'm going to go live on my farm. You're not crazy. If the president comes there, I'll be like, this is my private property. You said foot, I'll fucking shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> and you become like Brad Pitt where these young guys wanted to be rich. He helps them become rich. And yeah. then afterwards he gets he off grid yeah. again and yeah. he's like, you guys said you want to be rich? Yeah. I told you this thing is fucked up. Yeah. You guys saw it firsthand yeah. how fucked up it is. So you're rich now. Leave me alone. And in, in the docu-series How to Become a Tyrant, I thought it was quite an ironical series for mm. anyone who's watching it because it's, I think Peter Dinklage is his name. Mm. He's narrating how the Soviet Union... North Korea, mm. uh, Gaddafi in Libya, how uh, Adolf Hitler, yes. these tyrants that built these things. And in every episode, they talk about different tools that are used to pacify the masses, to yeah. lie to them. And while I'm watching each episode, I'm like, but America does all, all of, of these this. things. right? Um, and part of it is the propaganda. Yeah. And I, I, I guess, again, I'm asking. Are you like, going, are you, are you going see now? No, your, your naivety, like, yeah. does it not worry you? Because so, you, you get it, but you, like, okay. basically, you're the only sane person in a mental asylum. And the most important thing is that we have to unplug as many people as possible. That's why The Matrix was such an important uh, movie. Because Documentary. What it, what it actually was, right? Uh -huh. I, I don't know about the third one, but, like, the first two were really, really proper before they started to get it, like, make it really weird yeah. and take it away from what it was, which was to awaken people, yeah. right? I mean, we still use a lot of the analogies, blue pill, red pill, right? 100%. Um, so w my thing is that you're not losing your mind, but I, I implore you not to let the fight go. I think that no one idea will ever awaken... A, uh, people. It is multiple ideas that move us in the right direction that will. So you push a different uh, perspective and agenda to to what I do. I push a different uh, perspective because I, I, I do socioeconomic data-driven stories. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand the facts behind things so that then when I create a, a, a basis of opinion, we can then debate that based on what I know. Yeah. This is important. I'm also a farmer. You know that. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about that. I am just like that person where I say, I can see it and I'm worried about the world. I worry about the world. And I also want to go off grid, right? These are things that I say to people around me all the time. I've not gone into buying a house in Johannesburg because I do not believe that it offers me the best value for where the world is going. Mm -hmm. I don't have another 20 to 30 years to put into paying into a house in Bryanston for 3.5 million. Yeah. But for the same price, you can get 300 plus hectares back home in the Eastern Cape and I can create a sustainable ecosystem that I can protect when, when and if this thing ever goes tits up. All the way back to Greek philosophers. Mm. This is where now I get really sad. When you actually read the literature, when you watch the, docu the documentaries, mm -hmm. I mean, today we're still quoting Abo Steve Beagle. The fall of empire. It's like a lot of this stuff is... It's, re it's repetitive. It's repetitive. It's repetitive. And it's like, the, the, world, the, world, the world goes through cycles. We're cyclical. We go around. We have ecosystems that do everything in our planet, on our planet, on this yeah. rock, right? We go through cycles. America was never meant to be the preeminent um, sort of empire forever. Yeah. They were never. Because empires just, fall. They fall. Yeah, it's, it's right? one of the things that happens. They fall all the time. Yeah. And their time is up. That's that, This is the crazy thing. Their time is up. We're Shit, watching, you can't say that. Okay, let's speak about bricks. <laughs> we're You're watching, saying the, the American empire's time is up. We're watching the changing of the guard, my brother. 
We're watching the. We're watching it. We're watching. You know the thing you read about where you're like, yo, how did Rome fall? Yeah. How did Greece fall? Yeah. Right? How did the Ottoman Empire fall? Mm. How did the Mongols go down? How did how did China go down yeah. and and take a hundred year hit to come back and say, listen, we are past this hundred years of just humiliation. Mm. We're back now. Isn't just sangue in Yeah. Have you and, heard, have you heard the the camels on the on, on the horizon? No, have no. You read is, that thing. It's no. a story. I don't know if it's fictional of a sheikh. Yeah. Speaking to someone and telling them the camels are on the horizon. Mm. My grandfather rode a camel. My father. Uh, rode a Mercedes Benz. Yeah. I drive a Ferrari. Yeah, but then my kids are gonna go so back to. <laughs> at, at some point, it's that line of, um, I don't know, like strong men create good times. Good times, good times, good times create, create weak men. Or, weak yeah, weak men, men create soft times or whatever. Yeah. So do you think? Do you think it's just one of those things? And we, Ray Dalio has an amazing book called yeah. Principles, yes. and he's also got an amazing series. Series yeah, how I the economic it, yeah. machine works, and also principles. And one of the things he he speaks about the cycles. Yeah. And it's like once you figure that out, I think yeah. Robert Kiyosaki has done the same. Yeah. You want to figure how the how the game works so that you yeah. know these guys are dipping. System. So I short. Yeah, it's coming up. Let me go long. Yeah. A lot of things we don't know. We just happen to be in them now. Yes. And someone's like, guys, if you studied history, you've already you, got the you blueprint. You already know that. So just small position cycles, yourself here. There small are big cycles. cycles, and the small cycles happen within the big cycle. Sure. So you might go up, but actually, in the big cycle, we're still on the way down. Yeah. So all of these things. So, so the Americans, according to you, and maybe the yeah. the, the British are the arrogant great grandchildren who have never built anything, who don't know the sacrifice. They not listening. They're not paying attention. They're not studying the history. Yeah. And these upstart Russians, Chinese, maybe African kids mm. who come from dirt and struggle are now mm. going to go and start the cycle again. I think. I think. I want to firstly say that what America has built, right, uh, on an unbiased manner, what they've built is is really remarkable. Yeah. I think to to enslave uh, mentally as well as literally through guns. The rest of the planet is quite crazy. If you debt as well, sorry. through debt. If you if you actually think about it, right? The countries that they defeated, they handpicked. They said, "What do the Japanese have? They have a lot of industrial um, industrialization. Let's make sure that they're always under our thumb, right?" Yeah. South Koreans as well, mm. Germans as well. So so that we control how these things move around. So these engines of the world. Let's make sure we 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 were sorted with them. Yeah. Then from there they said, "How do we?" Make sure that we're always important. Money. They made sure that the way the world trades must go through us. The, the American dollar becomes the blood. Yes, it of, is of the, of the entire, of the entire global system, economy. Right? Without the blood, the entire and, system. And we have the blood and the heart. Yes, and then you, even countries like like Zimbabwe get sanctioned, can't do anything yeah. because of. American dollars that that aren't even on this continent, they're not from this continent, mm -hmm. right? So these are the things that we must, as people who are clear of thought, understand about America. What America did in the system that they built, it, it like you have to marvel at it. You have you, to marvel at you it. You have to. Yeah. Right? They built Hollywood as a propaganda machine. Yes. They built it it's to, very to make sure. That's why you. See, that's why we were going Texas, because we even know. We even know the <laughs> dialects. We even know yeah. this is Louisiana. This is whatnot. Yeah. We know America better than most average Americans, right? That's a fact. That's crazy to yeah. me. So you have to first do that. The second thing you have to then look at why it had to end. Hubris, ego. America will go around the world saying, "We give you money, we give you at this rate." But we also want you to change who you are. Mm. That's the, that, that. It's that last part that gets people unco unco sure what, what what this deal is there. They want you to change who you are. They want you to not educate your kids. They want you to not feed your people, mm. right? They want you to only buy from them or mm. their partners. This is where people go. I don't mind a bad deal. I know that I'm taking a residual on this BMW. Yeah. I know that. I, I'm not, so the only thing I have to do is produce money. So yeah. I'm fine with that. But the US will say, yeah, when you do this thing, you can buy this car, you can get this residual, but at the same time, uh, 
And then you go embrace these ideologies. You're like, ah, man, what's this got this to do with the deal? Yeah, what's this got to? What's my sister going out with you got to do with me buying a car? That's, that's Museveni, what, Museveni in Uganda. That's exactly what's Why going on. Why all of a sudden how we are living so you are has pro- anything to do with money? You're propagating and trying to popularize your ideology through money. Now we've got to now then question. Yeah. What is that ideology trying to achieve? And this is the big question. And that's why BRICS and all of these countries have come together to say, no, 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 no. Konok yeah. That's why we, that's where we find ourselves. How how similar is this analogy? I'm listening to you and yeah. I'm thinking of white South Africans, the apartheid Afrikaners and the British colonizers. Yeah compared to black people. Could you speak about America giving yeah. money yeah. and then wanting to shove ideology down and you've yeah. almost got a somewhat of, I think it's small, it's yeah. bigger than I think people, it seems on social media bigger than I think it is, but it's almost like this awakening yeah. in South Africa where yeah. even clever blacks are yeah. starting to be like, actually, I'd like to know what it means to be African yeah. and how we did things in the past and yeah. can we go herbal and yeah. organic and... How different is that with the arrogance of the apartheid government, which was yeah. arrogant, that yeah. also collapsed, yeah. arguably, uh, the British colonizers as well, and the emergence of black people. And now yeah. you've got black stooges, yeah. but you've got smart black kids who are like, but even these blacks are stooges. Yeah. We want to have our own identity yeah. that we get to own. How how similar, how, comparable, how similar How similar are those things, you think? It's. It, I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but what I do have is a comment. And the comment is that we must understand that as South Africans, we don't have a chance without working with Amapul, working with Amapul. I don't believe we have a chance. But can we not work with, so like like BRICS, yeah. can we not work with other Africans and other people? Because well, right now it's that, like, that's speak always, English, it's speak always, Afrikaans, change your name to Moses. It's always, it, Penwell, it's always quite important. This is why I always say, when you see the system for what it is, mm. When you say, when I say things like this, it seems so outlandish because of the polarization and the messaging that people have been fed. Yeah. I say we cannot exist and they can't exist without us. Okay. So we need to find a way to coexist properly, right? We will always, if the guidelines of, of, if the guidelines and the laws of the country allow us and create that framework, that garden for us to play in. Yeah. You can't control the social whims of people, but you can definitely create the laws that govern within that garden that we've created. Okay. You can create those. I'm saying we need to play nicely together. The One of the biggest, if not the biggest investment ever made on the planet was $30 million going from Naspers to Tencent in China, mm. which turned into 100 plus billion US dollars. I don't know of many others, many other investments on the planet. I think it's the greatest investment of all time. Of all time. Yeah. It came from here. Yeah. So there's something that we can learn from our Amapool. And there's something that can learn from us. 100%. Which is the humility we've got. In fact, Amapool are very much close to Africans. I agree with you. They're very close to being to, to Africans. Would you offer a similar argument with BRICS and America? The coexistence and the needing each other? They, they are so intertwined. BRICS and America are so intertwined that they know that as much as they can have trade wars on things that are inconsequential, the things that matter, they cannot untangle each other from. Mm. They cannot. This thing, this thing that we call this planet would fall apart. Yeah. It would literally fall apart. But what BRICS is offering is an alternate path for those who do not feel like the Western ideology and way of living on this rock mm. makes sense for them. We must have choice. And when you create more centers, multipolarity, you then can argue the merits of your financial system, of your way of work, of your policies, of your ideology, so that people can say, I like that thing. Mm. And it makes sense for me from where I am. The global South has been oppressed, suppressed for so many centuries yeah. that this was inevitable. We have gotten to a point of technological advancement that shows that even if even if the superpowers of the world tried to do something, mm. you could at least hold out. You wouldn't lose, you'd hold out. Mm. And we've seen that globally. A country with just drones, military drones, you can hold out, a superpower. 
Have you not been eating too much uh, Chinese rice and drinking Russian vodka? <laughs> so uh, we had the BRICS summit. Uh, yeah. I'd like to hear your overall thoughts on the summit itself yeah. and how yeah. well they brainwashed you. They articulated their messaging. Uh, well, whatever you want to call it, yeah. to win your mind over. Yeah. And uh, your trip to China. So so starting off with BRICS, I, I must say this. I had always been neutral growing up. Uh, obviously, I guess it, it it maybe was Western brainwashing. I'd always been pro, kind of West, kind of neutral. But also at the same time, I I grew up on once upon a time in China. I grew up mm. on bodyguard from Beijing. Jet Li and Jackie, Jackie Chan, Jackie, Jackie Chan, Chan, boy. So, <laughs> so Jackie I, knew, China. I knew that there was something really interesting happening in in in, in Asia in the East. I knew, but I didn't. But remember, it was still set back in 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 those ancient times yeah. right but i believe that what china was doing is that they and china plays the long game they were creating a base they knew that they couldn't win at that time but they needed to create a base for other people around the world to start to understand their culture and their way because in those movies you started to understand certain things whether it was about how they drink tea how they do yes. this thing the the honor that they have the you, discipline so the, the respect. discipline the respect I want because, to or snake in the eagle shadow snake, about, snake in the eagle shadow exactly mm. and what they were doing and this is why the long game is important even for bricks the long game that the chinese were playing and were creating what they were creating an alternate because you'll never hear that there's a chollywood or whatever mm. right mm. you never hear about the, the 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 film industry in china or whatever yeah. but there is, and it's burgeoning. And America knows this because of the sheer number of people that are there. Mm. They change their movies to suit what China wants. This is important for you to note. Yeah. And all of this was happening at a time where we were young, but we still got to imbue a lot of those um, principles. Whether it was, whether it was you understanding that at some point in your life on this hero's journey mm -hmm. in this Chinese movie, this guy's got to go train. Yeah. He's got to go get stronger. Yes. He's got to go into the mountain because he's got he's got something really big to face. That's, and that's right? Japanese anime he, and he, Dragon Ball Z. Yes. This thing of escaping, isolating, going to get stronger, to go, to coming just, back. To come, and being a better person, a better man, a better woman. Yeah. So these were the ethos that we were being taught and yeah. told, right? So those things, as someone who's now a, a middle-aged millennial, I look at it and I go, actually, there was a lot of grounding mm that came from those things. Because yeah. I still watch those movies and I still enjoy them. Mm. Which was ra rather different from the same karate movies that were happening in the West. Mm. Or Cynthia Rothrock and sure. all of these type of Michael things. Michael Dudikoff. Oh, Michael Dudikoff, uh, right? Billy Blanks. Yeah, or Billy Blanks. Yeah, well, yeah. And they were braggadacious, whatnot. But the Chinese, it was humility. Always. Right? It was like, I've won, I've beat you, but like, are you fine? With respect. And are you always like, respect you, your like, master. Are you, are you fine? It's the 48 laws of power. Right? Never outshine your master. I bought Jet Li, I bought Jackie Chan. Even I bought Jean-Claude when they crossed over, there was always this thing of my master. Yes. Now let's come Let's come to Briggs. I, do, I want to understand, and I want to get people to understand this very simple concept. Briggs is about common interest. Common interest. And where common interest does not exist in whatever a particular country or what the the block is faced with, mm. everybody reverts to national policy. Policy. This is important. This is one thing that no one is speaking about. BRICS is not an intergovernmental organization like the G7. They are not a military alliance, well, yet. But what they are is a common interest economic block. Economic. Yes. The emphasis is on economic. Economic block. Okay. Yes. It it might change into being a cultural, um, a cultural sort of synergy block. It yeah. might become a military block. It might. But for now, it's just an economic. economic block. The things that they talk about, it's the trade, it's the investment, it's how do we get people to people exchanges between countries? How do we get medium sized enterprises to work together across the block? How do we trade with each other on the block? It is a common interest economic block. What we were supposed to have with SEDEC, and I think there's the East African grouping uh, as well. Federation as Those well as Those were meant ECOWAS. to be economic blocks. Which, can we make trade easier here? So, so they are economic blocks. I don't want to take that away from them. They sure. are economic blocks because- But I'm just asking, yeah. your understanding is that that was the reason for that as well? Yeah. So Mostly economic? Yeah, or it was also including other things? But remember that they, uh, BRICS, is, BRICS crosses a lot of geo- uh, of geo geospatial sort of locations. Okay. So whereas it's clear that Eastern Federation is Eastern countries on yeah. in, in Africa. ECOWAS is the Western guys 
in Africa, yeah. right? Sadek is the southern guy. So yeah. it's it's clear. BRICS straddles so many continents. Sure. And it's one of the key tenets of you being a member is that you must hold influence in your corner of the world. You must yes, hold yes. influence. I didn't know that. In your corner of the world. You can't just be a country. BRICS is important. Yeah. BRICS is important because Iran is now part of BRICS. For the better part of, I don't know how many years, since the Shah of Iran mm. was, was deposed or whatever. BRICS, Iran is now a part of the global community. This is important. We cannot have somebody sitting out in the cold just because another guy told you that this guy is bad. Yeah. He's bad based on what? On your principles. Iran is important. Iran is a nuclear superpower. They have oil. They have resources. They have ideas that they want to share with the world. Why should they be a pariah? There's no reason why Iran is not part of the global community. There's no actual reason. What did Except they do? Propaganda. What did they do that was so bad? What did Iran do that was so bad that they needed to be a pariah? Weapons of mass destruction with Iraq and but, Afghanistan. But everybody has, which, I mean, we know that those things don't exist, right? We know now. We know. I mean, now is important, but we know that those things yeah. don't, don't exist. So what is this thing that Iran has done? To, 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 make, to, to make it so crazy for you to even consider talking to people in Iran. Yeah. Look, look, I'll, I'll say this. I wanted to, to off-ramp earlier, but yeah. I didn't want to kill your flow. Yeah. Speaking about the Chinese movies, um, studying propaganda. Yeah. For a long time, I, was, I've, I still am watching Nigerians and yeah. how they move globally because yeah. I think they're the greatest hope of the African continent yeah. from a black perspective yeah. and how they infiltrated South Africa with their movies, Africa Magic or Mr. Yeah. Ibu. Uh, from, now the we've got, up, eh? now we've from the ground up. Now we've got Afro from the ground up. From the ground up, Nollywood. Yeah. So I was like, I want to see how these guys move because they might be using yeah. those old strategies of yeah. get them to like the culture, get them to like uh, whatever they eat. It could be jollof, could yeah. be, I don't know if they eat plantain and fufu and yeah, those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was interesting and it's something to study. And for people who believe in mind control, inf yeah. infiltrating spaces, yeah. It may not be what you think it is. It may not yeah. be economic. It may not be. It could be from Korean. Could be K-pop. Yeah. yeah. BTS. K drama. Pink. K drama. Could be K series. K dramas. Yeah. The thing that gets you to love a country, and now all of a sudden you're trading because they started with the softer. Yeah. Soft Sarafina, sell. Soft sell before the Lion sell. King. Yeah. Awareness. You know. Um. I've lost my point now. Yeah. I wanted. To, oh, I wanted to speak about Iran sanctions. Yeah. I wanted to speak about sanctions. Yeah. This thing of. That guy maybe slept you when you were in grade 11. Yeah. And now we're mates. And now I can't speak to that guy and I hate him because and fuck him. And even though, like, I might see similarities and I want to work with him, I can't. Of the basis that in grade 11. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. It's one of my issues I have with sanctions. Yeah. In particular, because these things normally happen at the highest levels. Donald Trump doesn't at, like at the UN, Putin, which, which I have an issue Biden with. Biden, of course. This guy doesn't like that guy. So now the entire country, yes. you cannot trade. Yes. You've got a great idea. You've got a market in, in North Korea. You cannot trade with MTN. those guys. They like you. MTN Iran. Purely because at that level, the countries don't get along. 100%. And that pisses me the fuck off to a point where even now we can bring it back home. Uti, I can't trade Namapunu or yeah. Amandia yeah. because no, but these people, Amazulu, Namakosa, you know almost what happened. You're like, bro. Nah, be. Nah, be. So my, my big issue is we need to at some point assess at an individual family community perspective inherent biases guys mm. who who are the sanctioned nations and what is it based on and is it aligned to our ideologies yes because if it's not yes we need to very i mean we've got an issue with israel now yes where a lot of south africans have said sanction israel yeah but you've got a lot of influential jewish people here who are very well linked to Israel and yeah. a lot of our politicians, all Mandela, yeah. all of them have friends. Yeah. So yeah. officially we cannot, even if we wanted to. But someone else could say, the Muslims could say- I don't believe Mandela had a thing. Had a what? He had a relationship with the, with the state of Israel. No, no. Unless no. I stand I'll, corrected. I'll, 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 say, I'll say he had a relationship with a lot of influential Jewish people here. Oh. Who hey, linked to Israel. Hey, so he hey. could have never gone and said, I don't like Israel because no, all his mates. No, he didn't have to say, I don't like Israel. Yes. He went, he he was always with the Palestinian people. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah, and he, and he yeah. can explain it. My yeah, point yeah. is, if if as a country, yeah. let's say Mandela at the time said, sure. we stand with Palestine, sure. Israel must go jump. Yeah. 
I'm saying it cannot be fair that if you are doing work with Jewish guys, yeah. Israeli guys, now all of a sudden you guys can't trade. Yeah. Good mates. My mates are there, which is one of the issues I normally have with um, some of the white people in South Africa. Sure. Rich white people who have issues with Julius, yeah. have issues with the ANC. And I'm yeah. like, that's your beef. Yeah. It's got fuck all to do with me. And 100%. you're not going to suck me into bullshit and yeah. say, yeah, but look at what I'm like. He did that to you. Yeah. I'm fine with him. And this was the issue with um, Naledi Pando, Figil and Balula. Yeah. Saying, we've got good relationships with Russia. Yeah. Don't come fucking tell us because your mates in America or your business partners in America are saying 100%. that we must automatically adopt. Yeah. We're fine with America as far as we know, but we're also fine with Russia. Don't come dictate to us and bully us, but yes. they're they speaking as the South African government and as yes. the ANC. Yeah. Now at the bottom, we must be careful yeah. as a family, as a, to be like, well, if the ANC says, yeah. if it's like, no, bro, you need to look out for self, yeah. for your community and for your people and figure mm. out why do we have issues with Zimbabwe? Yeah. Why do we have issues with Nigeria? Yeah. Why do we have issues with North Korea? And yeah. you realize we don't. Mm. The people that have issues is that politician mm. or that businessman mm. for these reasons. Yeah. For that reason, when they speak up, we'll be like, we're not involved. Don't force us. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, we can't trade with these people and our accounts are getting blocked because you don't like them. Do you, know, do you know what's really interesting about what you're saying about that? I think, firstly, we have to understand that uh, government is a representation of a nation, right? It's meant to be, yes. Meant to be. And in this instance, we vote people in. And it's very hard for people to understand this. And I know it, right? People don't understand that the formation of governments where elections are free and fair uh, create, like you're not the only one. Yeah. Like you, like other people voted as well, bro. And other people, we are multipolar beings ourselves as a band. Correct. And it's it's not one ideology that permeates from you, Penwell. Mm -hmm. You see something and you see it maybe as a liberal. You see something else, you see it as a centrist. You see something else, you're like, ah, no, 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 you're conservative around that issue. Correct. We are multipolar people, Guatina. Correct. So nobody can say to Penwell that Penwell is this particular thing, mm -hmm. right? And we make that mistake. So every time people get surprised at the vote outcomes in South Africa, you go, ah, Ganjan. It's simple. The African National Congress creates a good enough, whether it's a manifesto, whether it's a, an ethos that permeates the most amount of people who actually go vote. Correct. It's like you getting mad over it doesn't change it. Much, much I love is a good example. You can uh, call it all what, the names you, you want to call. Yeah, but, but that much thing, I love attracts people, people. that want to watch. It, of all the shows, yes, those same people say I hate 80%, yes. but I watch it for that the, show. Exactly. And because... 30 million people visit the channel, that channel will be the favorite channel. Bro, so at the end of the day, how you feel alone doesn't yeah. affect how the populace feels. It's not the average of the populace, yeah. it's just you. The average comes out in the numbers, the data. Again, yeah. that's why I'm not, sometimes I'm not moved by, by opinion. Those were people talking about opinion, Elon Musk and all these people, they were, sure. they were all opinion based. The other side of the coin, is that we've got to understand that as much as it is that there are, for instance, right, in, I can't remember the year, but Facebook was around. We discovered our family, right, mom's side, Olupuan. We discovered that there's Olupuan in Zimbabwe. Like, like an entire clan yeah. of Olupuan, specifically Olupuan. Konanom Lodge as well in Zim, and, and, and we connected and we have the same clan names, we have the same everything. We are one thing, literally yeah. one thing. So when our cousins come over, whatever, it's one thing. We don't even have to be like, hey, do they know how to, they speak Istosa, they, the same customs, the same thing that we do, they do. And you like, you're sitting there going, ah, there's someone who didn't want us to know this. Yeah. Because how is it possible? How is it possible? Because remember, even Abandaba Duka, uh, clans that as a Duka, they ran away from a part of being other clans. Mm. They still kept those same traditions that they knew because they didn't know a different way. Sure. It might have twisted and changed a little bit, but it's still the same people. You go to places like Uppington, you get to Uppington, mm. Uppington, they do the same things. Mm. So now you start to get to say to yourself, ah, ah, man, ah, 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 ah. Oh, hold on, hold on. I went to Kenya. I get to Kenya in Nairobi. And I'm like, I can somewhat hear this language. Mm. I've never learned it. Guess what, I've never, I've never like sat down and said, I'm like, mm, this sounds a little bit similar to Nguni. Yeah. So I'm like, hold on, Machita, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who does it serve? Who, who's, who wins when we are separate? Yeah. Who wins? Yeah. And so all these things are very important for us to understand. So when coming back to the thing of Iran, 
We must bring Iran back into the fold. Iran is a superpower. South Africa is a superpower. We're a nuclear superpower, but we don't know it yet because no one is telling people that we have the capabilities to enrich nuclear materials. Yeah. People don't know that. It's For me, it's crazy. It's crazy that we don't know that we are a nuclear superpower that's being suppressed. We're being given funds to not progress. We have energy problems in this country that we can solve with the materials and minerals that are under our earth. It's crazy to me. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yes. Because I now understand it. It, it goes yes. back to that if we make you strong, yes. we become weak. 100%. And in this world, unfortunately. Remember I came here and spoke about oil and gas? Yeah. They've just discovered more oil and gas in Mbumalanga. Mo- this past week, Clayson Munyela posted it. This past week, my brother. Yeah. He says, no, no, no. Hey, guys, we've just... You just went full Tulsa right there. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep it flowing. So... <laughs> So we live in this world that we are not meant to know certain things. This is the world where we live in. And I want people to, to read, to, to watch, to listen to media across the world and in this country with a discerning ear. Why? Because it's important when you read something to, to understand who is writing it and how do they gain if I am positive to the story and how do they gain if I'm negative to the story? I, and then what is the truth about the story? Are you not speaking like this just because you happen to be part of a loser group and mm. you happen to be different? Prob- uh, probably. And, and you stumbled yeah. upon, across information that you weren't supposed to and you're like, this is bullshit. And if maybe you are part of the other side, I mean, this yeah. is the argument I make to Zulu people yeah. who think they're dominant. It's the argument I make to the educated. <laughs> I saw you, it's the I saw, argument I make with... I saw you get excited over watching a Zulu... Um, I don't think it was a Zulu man, a Gita. And you were like, man, I f- I'm feeling this, but I'm still not part of the thing, but yeah, I'm, yeah, feeling, yeah. I'm feeling this particular thing. No, no, of course, of course. <laughs> and I laughed so much. Sorry, yeah, sorry and, and people don't get it. And it's, it's whatever. I'll explain it one day. Mm. But um, when you're part of the winners... Yeah. And then someone comes to threaten... Yeah. There was an issue now with people, one of the prime, uh, what is he, member of parliament in Lesotho saying parts mm. of Free State and Gauteng belong to Lesotho. Yeah. And South Africans were like, fuck that. Belongs to If you want it, you can come and fight us and we'll see how far that goes. If you were to tell Zulus, no, to, to be honest, guys, Yazu Shaga was actually Mkosa from, they'd be like, fuck you, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> when people are part of a winning group, yeah. they will preserve and be, and be comfortable with the propaganda yeah. and the lies. Yeah. As soon as it gets shaky, yeah. all of a sudden, uh, mm. people get angry and sorry. And I'm, I'm wondering this, your frustration and your, but why are people not getting this? Why are they not seeing mm. it? Why are we being suppressed of the information? Yeah. Is it not just that you're part of a losing group? And if you weren't, you wouldn't care? Because now the dilemma for other people, let's say like myself, yeah. this is the sellout conversation, yeah. is when you meet the dominant group, yeah. And they realize you sound like us. Yeah. You sound like a winner. Yeah. You sound like a conqueror. Mm. Come join us. We've already set the systems up. Just yeah. learn Afrikaans. Yeah. Just learn Chinese. Just pledge your allegiance to the American flag. Yeah. We already here. And then you can be part of, I mean, this is the story of Elon Musk. Yeah. Elon Musk is now an American. He's part of the winning culture. His kids will be like, we're Americans. What we did historically, you're like, shut up, man. David Freeberg, uh, Rule of Porter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could mention all of the Afrikaners that are now in Silicon Valley, right? Yeah. Um, and that network still exists for the Afrikaners. Yeah. But again, biases and inherent sort of feelings towards people stop us from, I'd say, not, not necessarily benefiting, but from exploiting that relationship. Why, because, why do you want your people to rise up? I think that's what I'm trying to figure out. Why do you want South Africans to rise? Fun, funny enough, we had why this conversation, but off air rise? the last time. We had yeah. it off air. Well, how does I, it serve you? I understand how me. it serves South Africans and how it serves black people. How does it serve you? Because I, think, I, I understand so, you so, come from yeah. a place where black people are not allowed in the suburbs. Yeah. And your mom happens to be a domestic worker. Mm. And for whatever reason, yeah. no one can babysit you. Yeah. So she brings you into this estate. Yeah. But she brought the wrong person because no one ever knew that in this kid, he, he was going to look at everything I, I and not get excited be, by, by all these shiny things. I'd be like, where do they come from? You're excited. But in mm. your head, you're like, why not me? Yeah. And you spend the rest of your life trying to making sure that you come in and own that house. Yeah. Um, it makes sense for you in that journey. And what I've seen historically is those people 
whether it's Dubai, yeah. whether it's the Americans. I mean, Johan Rupert yeah. and and his links in Switzerland and France. Yeah. It's when people are like, you are one of us. Yeah. Come join us at the table. Trevor mm. Manuel sitting with the Rothschilds or whatever. Yeah. You're one of us. Yeah. So once you get to that level, Cyril, Nelson Mandela, Patrice, mm. people are like, we like this boy. Yeah. Bring him over. Give him everything he needs and get him to understand that this is how the world works. We'll sit, letting you sit at the table, coffee or none. But there's a reason why the rest of the people cannot be dominant. And you're yeah. going to understand it soon enough. So, 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 Oh, you know, Penel, you always raise so many issues at one time. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. So let's start with um, let's start with what I I I I feel now. So I I I am empathetic. I'm empathetic because because you're black and South African. Maybe, maybe, and I don't want to say yes on that because I'm also empathetic to other blacks. We we are a marginalized people. We have always been a marginalized people, but we were once really great at, at our way of life, right? But when other ways of life, which developed because of their own uh, instances, proximities and whatever, they, relative to what the, relative to violence, relative to their propensity to violence. I like that. When those nations increased, they then exported violence first, right? So that they could make you docile so that they could then tell you what and who you needed to be. Yeah. So, I understand that. So what hurts me all the time is when I sit, right, or I drive through small towns and I am hurt at seeing people that look like me, right, suffer. It actually hurts me. So that's the first trigger to say, mm. but I don't stop at that. The average person will stop at that. And then I go, but what would be... What would be the the, 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 the the medicine for the situation that these people are faced with? And I say, is it within my power? Mm. And most of the time it's not. But then I, I said to myself, but if I think this way, on the balance of probabilities, I'm sure there's enough people Correct. that think this way. I don't need the whole country to think like this. I need the right people Correct. in the country to think like this. And what this means is that we we know what we have to do when you when you drive home you will drive past a former industrial area right mm. and you say to yourself but could we not be doing something here mm. could we not like and mm. this this town is of Vuga. yeah could we not be Yo, and sh- this town is of Vuga. Of i love Vuga. the way you put it's it it's of Vuga. And, and, and you're like, but like but this no, town is something this thing doesn't need a lot doesn't need a lot right it needs Maybe it's five, six factories yeah. doing simple things that we already consume and or import. Correct. So for me, I'm very much empathetic. That's the first thing. And I want to solve things. So just like just like your 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 sort of like outcome, your dream that you want, which is to go back into a, a, a off the grid, whatnot, I think like that too. Mm. I think like that very much because remember, in order for you to go forward, you must first pass the ball backwards to the goalkeeper so you can see the game. Sure. And the reason why I do that is that I must go back to the Eastern Cape. I must go back home so I can center myself there, so I can understand the problems that exist there, so that I can do my bit for the smaller Nyana people that I can do. But if a thousand, ten thousand other people decide that this is what they want to do, as well, we then must push that ideology and allow those people and empower those people to be able to do that. I don't want to change the world for everybody. I can't do that. Yeah. But I care about my little corner on this little rock, on this big rock that is Africa. And in on, even in within the borders of my country, I can't change the whole country. Yeah. So I, I even regress further and I say, if I do this thing for just these people, I will feel better that I have done my bit because the revolution will not come from the lower classes. It comes from the middle class. Sankofa. Uh, the word Sankofa comes from the Akan or Akan, mm. people of Ghana. It is an Akan term that literally means to go back and get it. Mm. To what you were you were saying yes. about sometimes we have to send the ball back to the goalkeeper. Yes. See what worked in the past. That's why yeah. now we're moving to green. Yeah. Eco-friendly, herbal. Yes. It's because we're going back to that. That's why people are now literally going back to the yeah. past to go and ask for for answers. So so I want to I want to jump to 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 how was your experience of 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 China? How was your actual experience? You meant to I mean, answer mine, and I don't think you've covered the brick which summit. One, which because one? Because you and I can chat forever, forever about a lot of things. <laughs> and like I said, you're a talking machine. So Okay, so bricks. Um, so wait, wait, wait. Sorry, you, you've just brought me back. Sure. So the bricks thing, that was the first thing. So common interest, ability to trade. 
So, so trade, remember the system we didn't create it, we f- kind of like found it like this, this new system, right? Bretton Woods, et cetera. Sure. And the it's, economic it, system we're operating in. Yes, globally. it's built It's built on a few key sort of like tenants. And one of those is people, right? Mm. So people. So, so technically, you're allowed to print or create as much money as what will keep the economy stable, but not force prices to increase inflation. <laughs> Critical but stable. Yes. Sure. So you must you must never overprint because overprinting means that there's more money. More money means prices go up because they're seeing more people are buying my product, yeah. and then thus I can increase the price. And if you increase the price, prices increase. Hyperinflation. Yes. Yeah. So, but you can print relatively a lot of money for a base of people, but still keep inflation within a particular target. Mm. So the system is built of that. But then inflation is tied heavily to fractional reserve banking, which is yes, the creation of money, now, boy. the creation of money off nothing, of vibes, Mchita, of vibes, right? Interest, because interest is technically vibes. But I, need, it is, I, need you, I need you to slow this down because yes. fractional reserve banking is something that even educated people don't understand. Or maybe they fail to, Can they you fail explain to explain. So fractional reserve banking is this. You put, let's say, let's call it 100 bucks. So yeah. 100 bucks goes into a bank account, right? The South African Reserve Bank yes. gives EPSA yeah. 100 rand. Yes. So okay. they printed the money. Ne? At the it, South African Reserve Bank. Gives it, they gave EPSA, EPSA or Standard Bank or Net Bank EPSA. before we get accused of things. <laughs> I was uh, going to say 100 EPSA's, rand. EPSA's a great case. But um, they get the 100 bucks. Yeah. Now, what they have is a minimum reserve of that hundred bucks ne, that they must keep. The South African Reserve Bank says you have to have it at least 20, this much money. 20 rand. Because as much as they gave them the money or they borrowed, right? The bank borrows the money, yeah. borrows. Because they have to send it back, by the way. The South so African Reserve Bank lends borrows, yeah. one of the big banks, hundred rand. Yeah. At, we are at, also- At interest, yeah. there's a name for it, yeah. whatever, at interest. And then Report this bank it. must go and make more money off yes. it. Yes. And then we are also depositing money into the same bank. Sure. Right? So let's say the bank ends up with a thousand so that the math is easier. So we've deposited X amount, but there's a thousand in. Whether yeah. it was 500 from people, 500 from uh, the reserve bank. Stop quickly. So yes. borrowed a hundred. Yes. The reserve bank says you have to at least have 20 rand. Yes. And then other people we have brought in and we've made let's, this. Let's make it 200 thousand. so that it's easy for the math, right? So okay. we we gave 100 and in savings, in small and savings, yeah. and then they borrowed another 100. So we have 200. Okay. Then they say you must keep 20% of this, which is like 40. 40, 40 rand. rand. Now, the other 160, they can now lend out to those who are economically active sure. and will work to bring the money back. Yeah. What you must understand is that that money that must come back, comes back is Yeah. So if they said the interest is 10%, that money must come back as 170. Yeah. Right? So they've made 10. Yeah. 10 rand J. That 10 rand did not exist in the economy. Correct. This is what people must understand. It did not exist. There was no 10 rand. Correct. It wasn't printed by the Reserve Bank. It wasn't, it wasn't created by us depositing. Someone had to work in order for that 10 rand to now exist, to pay off the interest. Now this is how money keeps being created in the simplest form. I right? like I like I'd like to I'd like to come in and, and yeah. give it a gander. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying even educated people struggle with fractional reserve banking. I'm gonna give uh, my yeah. example. Yeah, yeah. Um so I'm gonna raise that and then I wanna raise Sharia law, Islamic law, and why I have issues with it. And I've argued with some of my Muslim friends. Sure. The South African Reserve Bank gives a bank a hundred rand. Yeah. And they say you must keep 20%, 10%, whatever. Yeah. The bank takes that 100 rand and mm. they say this will be yeah. the 20% mm. that they say we must keep. Yeah. And then they, we will loan 80%, which did yeah. not exist. Yeah. Because it's just no, numbers no, 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 on the no, no, screen. No, 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 no. Don't no. stop me. Don't stop me. Don't stop me. No, no, no. But I must. Don't I stop must. me. No, no. I'm not killing your argument. No, I'm no, no. I'm trying I, I to paint a picture. I, I want to make it make sense. Not, they don't, remember, the 80 d- does exist because it was Yeah, created. you see, you're killing my example. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Allow me. The gag. So okay. they're going to keep this 100 rand. Yeah. And they, 20% is 100 rand, 80% is 500 rand, whatever the case yeah. may be. They, they loan it out to people in various ways. At an interest. That money did not exist. And then those people are going to bring it back at interest. And once the interest comes back, they're going to loan out that interest 
But at the end of the day, all that they ever need to keep for the South African Reserve Bank is the 100 Rand. So forget the technicalities yes, yes, of my yes, argument. Yes. The whole point I'm, I, I, yes. I, I'm making in my example is I want people to understand that the money that banks are meant to have versus the South African Reserve Bank, if we balance the books, for example, yeah. is very different from the money that the banks create, which did not exist before. Yeah. And even after they've created it, it gets to multiply. Yes. There's the technicalities, of course, of real money versus non-real versus yeah. virtual. Yeah. My argument now with Sharia law is the Muslims don't believe in interest. Yeah. And part of the argument is this argument that interest is not real money. If I lend you 100 rand, you must bring it back at 100 rand. Yeah. Because if I give you something, a cow, you yeah. must bring back a cow. It doesn't make sense to say, yeah. bring back two cows. You're like, yeah. but I've only had it for a month. Yeah. A cow will take however long to fall pregnant mm. and however long to give birth and then for however long for that cow to grow. And you're telling me I must bring it back in a month. The math doesn't make sense. Yeah. But what I've said to some of my Muslim friends is as much as we are we have issues with fractional reserve banking because yeah. it's a it's a it's a it's scammy to some degree. Yeah, it's a bit of a heist. Um and inflation as well. Hmm. The concept they work, of they work together, eh? They yeah, work, yeah. They work together because oh, remember, of course. remember th that's why it's very important for people to understand that every single let's say quarter the Lesecha Khanyaho will get onto television and he'll say this thing interests are going up or interests are remaining the same yeah. or we are actually we're actually decreasing interest rates because of these two things, right? Yeah. The money supply, which causes inflation, prices to rise and thus inflation, but also the interest within the market, debts with that exist within the market, mm -hmm. and the fact that those someone's actually what 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 you must understand around these two concepts, the interest as well as uh, inflation, is that what drives these things is you going to work and becoming productive relative to the capitalistic system. Correct. So so, so you, these things, they, they work together. They, they are mutual. Sure. Right? So what at the end of the day, somebody's going to do work somewhere, somehow, to be able to pay off that interest. Which Some didn't way, exist somehow. before. It didn't exist. This money didn't Th exist. This is where debt becomes a form of slavery. Where in the past, you'd have to get whipped to and, be more productive. And then there's compound interest. To today, it's if we, if we pay you less than what you need, you will have to work harder to get what you need. And, and how you do that is going to borrow. And but then the you biggest, also have to... That's the biggest issue that is facing South Africans and a lot of people globally. It is that inflation is going up faster than wages and it's done intentionally because then it becomes slavery because you have to work harder or borrow more to make up the shortfall yes and and because if you lived comfortably and had extra savings what would push you to get a side hustle and push and sell and and i want i want also people to understand this but i'm, I'm going to say this and i'm not going to go further into it and don't push me to but this was also important right so that there was also, this, what I'm going to say, was quite important for the capitalistic system to keep wages low. Mm. They needed to introduce people that were not part of the labor market into the market. Mm. Women. Correct. They needed to bring, so that prices could remain the same. So that, so that the cost of a worker remained the same. Because why? We have more people wanting to work. And women are cheaper. But yes, we could go later. So, with some hey, of my Muslim friends... Because... It, 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 it's also quite interesting that the, the capital, capitalism is is not gen, gender sensitive. It doesn't care. This I, is, I disagree with it, you. It, it but doesn't we could care. Debate it. No, yeah. So it doesn't care. So I need a worker who is capable of working and working at the lowest possible. The price. lowest is where the gender and the race and the nationality comes well, in. That's why I'm saying it does care. That's why Americans, after hiring and exploiting black slaves. They had to find the next slave class, which no, was the Mexicans. I agree. That's with why you. we in South Africa, rich people, not we, rich people in South Africa love open borders and immigrants coming in. Yeah. So it becomes it's not direct. Yes. But also but at the same, but also at the same time. Because women, women are cheaper. And mm. when they were brought in, ah, we wanna debate it now. Ah, ah I don't I, I don't want to I don't agree. I don't agree. Because women in heel fields are actually like making more money than than men, so no, that's that's another discussion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. So that's no, I'm saying from, a, from a an worker. economic perspective. But but women exist. women are cheap, and that's why they were brought no, in. No, no, Penwell. They they were brought when in women, when women when women could come in. This is why we have pay disparities. No. When women were brought in, they were brought in to compete with the man that is hired, and they came in cheaper. 
And that's why even the, today we still speak y- about yes, the gender pay gap. Yes, they came in cheaper in certain industries I'm where speaking they could. Where as they a whole. could. No, no, no. But you want to say as a whole. But when I say as a whole, you say no. Listen, no, what I'm I, saying. I, I, I'm saying as a... No. All I'm saying is capitalism. Yes. They won't say it directly because they care about yeah, outputs. Obviously they can't. But I'm telling you, it's like uh, subliminal or structural they, racism. They, they don't. actually know that it's it's gender sensitive and race sensitive. Yes, because remember, yes, it's part of the division. But I'm I'm saying to you that in health, education, administration and literacy, women are, have parity. And in some cases they earn more than men. But that's not the whole. But it's part of the whole that we are creating. No, but once it becomes part, because I know the data you talk about, and it's one of the misleading things that get posted out there, the fact that women are underpaid. And if you look at a lot of the industries, you're like that. I call bullshit. So, so on it. So, uh, just to close this thing, Speci- specifically, gonna... specifically, sorry, the yeah, the professional jobs. If you look yes. at the data, yeah, marginally, marginally, black women get paid more than black men. White men get paid far more than white women. But it's white men. White woman, black woman, black man, it's marginal. But then when you go to the more unskilled you must share this what, data with me. Sure. You must share this more data of the unskilled and the, the men marginally get paid more so, at the lowest end. So, so just to just so that we close this thing so we don't go down a rabbit hole. What I want to say is that I also don't believe in equal work, equal pay. I believe in equal work, equal pay for equal experience. That's important. No. Penal. No, I'm not. Pen- I'm not. That's your opinion, and yeah, I'm, and I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. I exactly, hear your exactly opinion. Same. Exactly. Same. I disagree. Because with if, if you become a professor today, right, and I've been a ten-year professor, should we get paid the same? Because it's not professor by two. No. Yeah. You. You. You sound like a worker. Uh, no. No. We should not. Uh. We. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to avoid the rabbit Let's, hole. Let's. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So. The argument with fractional it's reserve good to disagree, banking, by the way, it's very no. Good to, you very and I good. can go, boy. Yeah. And look, depending on the audience, maybe we can come and have these topics where we disagree or debate or yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure. The difference between fractional reserve banking, yeah, and interest, yeah, for me got to a point where I was a loan shark. Yeah, I would take a thousand rand, loan it out at twenty to thirty percent in a month, which is two hundred to three hundred rand that mm. I've made in interest. Yeah, and then I can compound it. Yeah. I have just created a 200 rand, 300 that did not exist before. Mm. So I become like a mini bank. Yeah. I'm getting people to go work harder for mm. me. And I asked one of my Muslim mates, what is the difference between that and you going to buy stock for a hundred rand, for a thousand rand? Yeah. And then you sell it at 200, 300 rand profit. <laughs> that money also did not exist. <laughs> and when that profit comes in and now, now we can go further where it takes me 30 days to get interest. Yeah. You can spin the same loaf of bread how many times a day? <laughs> and when you look at the profit you've made in a month, I understand what you're, you're going to look down on me because I'm Jewish because, because technically, and I charge interest. But you charge insane because, profits and that's cause, valid. Because technically profit is actually interest. Essentially. In, in your case. And that was the argument yeah. I was making. I was no, like, no, no, you know, no. a lot of us buy no, into no. this idea and it sounds noble. Yeah. Muslim to Muslim, we yeah. don't charge interest. Yeah. But then you're like, but you guys charge profit on goods. Mm. And some of the profit margins you make, mm. I mean, if you retail, let's say clothing, yeah, a guy could be making 300% and you're like, nah, and I'm only charged 10% on a loan, but yeah. I'm the bad guy because yeah. he loans out money. That's yeah. a sin. And that's, yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nah. So anyways, fractional reserve banking, you were speaking about the economic system. Yeah. You were speaking about capitalism. You wanted to ask me about China, but we were speaking about the BRICS summit. Yes. So. Yeah. Um, damn. Okay, cool. My so, apologies. No, because no, no. you talk too much and I talk too <laughs> much too and much. it's a fuck so, up. So what is important to understand about BRICS is that it was that common interest. Second thing is the financial system. Uh, third is the reforms within you the market. You speak about people as one of the factors. Yes. So people uh, people to people, right? Yeah. People to people exchange, right? So that we're able to do um, trade. We're able to invest in our own currencies that are not pegged to a super currency like the dollar, yeah. right? So your money should be worth uh, is worth something and my money is worth something. We need to figure out how do we rebase our money and my simple sort of uh, way out of it was that why don't we take whatever the average of all the currencies of all the people that are in the BRICS, find the most, uh, find some weighting, create a BRICS bond, and everybody buys a BRICS bond relative to how 
everyone else is doing. You buy a BRICS bond and that bond allows you to buy things like oil from Iran, from Saudi Arabia, et cetera. So mm -hmm. that we base it on something else other than. So if you have minerals, if you have produce that you trade with, if you have things that you do, your money has worth within the system. We just need to figure that out. And there are smart people who are working on this right now. So you, it was, you believe in creating a currency that is a fair reflection of economies? I believe in that because I think at the same time we've that, got to have fairness. Also, that's also naive, unfortunately. We, but, from my from my perspective. No, that's fine. But we've also yeah. got to have something else. Because, no, 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 I because agree. when I people agree. say, Are we not trading one master for the other? I say it has because, to improve. Because people don't it has to most improve. people don't want to use their brain power for solutions. Yeah. And those that offer solutions are often lambasted by Abandabang and Teta. Sure. And, and and this is it's a huge problem that we have in this country as well as on the African continent. We need to be solutions based. We must be. So if someone comes we, to solution, we are emotions based. Yes, if as, I have, a, as a black people, if I have, if I have, if if Zimasa comes to the solution, let us look at the solution as Zimasa and debate the solution. Correct. Because if, in Nagi, we've already agreed we know the problems. Yeah. We've already agreed long time ago. We're like, I, there's a problem here. So now when I come with the solution. You are saying, ah, I'm getting sevens. But for 18 lays or sevens. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree with you that we need an improvement. I was just asking the yeah. concept of like a fair currency. So so the fairness in this model or, that or I'm at proposing. Least, or let's put it this way. Um, the argument would be a more fair, which I yes. fully agree with. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 the model that I propose, one, gives people a choice. Mm. You can still, remember the biggest bullet that can be shot into the West is for Saudi Arabia to say, whatever your currency is, come buy oil. We're not saying we're against the dollar, but whatever currency you have, there's a way for you to buy oil from us. And it won't be pegged to the value of the dollar. No, no, no they don't even have to say that. No, but this is what I'm trying to figure no, out. No, no, they don't even have to say that. Remember, we are the ones that trust the American dollar okay. based on vibes. Okay. Because it's not backed by anything, it's backed by vibes. <laughs> What's the vibe, Ndwana? <laughs> You understand? So now they can say, buy with whatever currency you have. Don't don't convert it first. Ah uh ah. -uh. They say buy. Okay. You've you've got uh, Chilean what what's bring mm. them. You've got the Italian lira. Bring it. What what you what you got, my friend? What, what you got? got? What, what you got? got? What you got, my friend? So so at the end of the day, and then all we have to do is figuring figure out how do we base it. So, okay. so therefore, so currently we base it to the dollar, but yes. we want to change the base. I hear you. We want to just change the base. Hola. So to say, actually, based off that base, which is different from this one, yeah. my currency can buy 20,000 barrels of oil. And you're saying that base should be a BRICS bond that is agreed I, upon. 100%. A bond is a, a loan product. Yes, from uh, from countries, sovereign, sovereign bonds. Okay. Right? So basically- For people to understand, because bonds can be tricky for tricky, people yeah. that don't understand. So, so what, am I, what exactly am I buying? Yes. So buying like a, a debt product of, like a unit of a country. trust. So you're buying- you're buying, interest or whatever. Yes, you're buying the- the economic prospects and brand of a, of a country, but now yeah. we're making it of a group so that you don't feel like Mari South Africa, sure. or hey, this one is, is going too high. Maybe I'm going to lose the value or whatever. Yeah. So we're saying, base it, let's create more bases and then let's figure out. Yes, there'll be more people that are doing arbitrage and making money across the bases, mm -hmm. but at least you will know that your money is worth something different to other people. Sure. And you'll just have to work that thing out. Do you think it's going to happen? I believe it will happen. I believe you it's believe, one of the- You believe de-dollarization is inevitable and it's just a matter of time? 100%, because they would not have brought six. We now have six of the nine highest oil producing or top producing oil um, oil countries in the world in BRICS. So it, it, it just wouldn't make sense to not do it, in fact. And it was important that we brought in Iran for many reasons mm. and for some that I've placed, but also for oil. Mm. When you control the liquid gold that runs the planet, when you have six out of nine, we are speaking a different game, Chanam. Mm. It's a different game now. Because remember what OPEC is. OPEC for the the organization of uh, petroleum exporting countries, yeah. right? Was there so that they could have a singular place where they set the price for these things. Sure. But that thing is still based on the dollar, the petrodollar. Yeah. So now we're saying, hmm, why doesn't 
why don't keep keep those things you have and those agreements you have as long as they don't they don't uh, economically disadvantage you yeah. right keep those but also we would like a different system of buying from you because you're also part of us mm. that's what we're doing we're just saying different we're not saying I'm out with America and whatnot because America wants it to be a, a enemy they want a clear enemy but now so many countries are applying and are now part of BRICS that they there are so many enemies enemy please give a short uh, answer it's yeah. gonna be fucking hard. <laughs> your your overall view of the summit in itself. You attended it, so I'm asking more from a. I walked in, I saw this, I heard some of these discussions without going into the detail. Yeah. What was your feel no, of just no, the, the event? So, so I, I think the event more than the, so I was the takeaways. I was invited, but I didn't go. So okay. and, and it was I it was on purpose because I I didn't want to be because sometimes you you drink too much of the Kool Aid when you're that is there. true. But what I saw from the sidelines of sure. it, right, meeting up with people from China, people from India, etc., was that what's happening now is that it was inevitable. It was the, the wheels were in motion a long time ago, and it was always going to take a long time to get going, along in country terms, right? Ten years is relatively long because a, a lot changes, governments change, etc. Sure. But the project of BRICS has kept rolling over the years. And mm. now it found the opportunity, which was COVID, where the world said, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it was the perfect time to say, yeah. let's introduce this thing that's a bit different. Because everybody understands. And yes, for people that want to write in the comments and say, but this thing serves China, this thing serves Russia, this thing serves whatever. Yes, but it also serves us. Because it's, now it's we, have a different, we have a Yes. That, we that have should a, always be the argument yeah. that guys, may, maybe, because that's the question. Yes, Are you going to be serving a new master? And the answer is, look, I'm moving from one company to another. They've yes. offered me better benefits. Yes. Will, I, will, there, be, will there be rules at that new company? Yes. Yeah. And they are telling me, look, I'm going to be a partner. Yeah. Am I really in the long run? I don't know. But I'm telling you now, when you look at contract on contract, this yes. contract looks better. And, and if you're smart, you 100%. can't say stay here yeah. when you've got a better opportunity. Exactly. And we're not even leaving. Which is why here, people like Herman Mashaba will come and say, if he becomes president, he's going to take us out of bricks. Mchita, I don't think you understand. I don't know how many votes he's potentially lost by, by, going by saying I was, that. I was there at the business conference in Armanas when he yeah. said it, and I cringed. Like and I, 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 had, I had questions. Did you go to Marcus Eustace's house? Is he an Armanas? Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Now, I, I wouldn't know. My information ah, is not that deep. That better. <laughs> Marcus, uh, we didn't meet at all. So I don't know what this guy's talking about. We have full Marcus. Well, he's here. He's chilled. South Africa is a lekker. Park stage, Brie. You can chill here. <laughs> um, I, I cringed when he said it. And I had a question to ask. It's just Alec Hogg. Uh, the owner and the founder of Biz News. And yeah, they've and done really dope. They've done 10 years. Yeah. He's a Newcastle High old boy, which is pretty dope. Yeah, from my hometown, you look know, at, look we at make shit shake. Look at y'all. Tired of fucking Dalians and whatever the fuck, <laughs> fuck people. Personal attacks. Oh, you're from... Ah, oh, shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. Personal attacks. My like bad. Bad, like bad. So I wanted to ask him a question I never got a chance to. And yeah. my question was going to be this. So I want to say this first. Yeah. When you've traveled the world, and this is what you were saying about finding like-minded people. It doesn't have yeah. to be everyone. Yeah. When you look at what's made countries great, it's yeah. never the population. The population uh -uh. is whack. Uh -uh. Travel to China, travel yeah. to Russia, travel to America. The average person there... Bang average. If you compare me and you, yeah. we are way superior to them. Yeah. That's why we get pissed off with Abu Biden, Abu Trump, Abu Cyril. Yeah. Because I think mentally we're at that level. Because you actually understand the system. And if what's not going even on. superior, yeah. arguably. So, have I lost my point? My point was Herman Mashaba. And yeah. I wanted to ask this question. Can we agree, if you've ever traveled to these countries, that these countries are functional? Yeah. They work. Yeah. Their economies are doing well. Yeah. Yes or no? And so, then if so, they say no, they, they are then lying yeah. officially. Yeah. If they say yes, yeah. then my question is, if, if those countries are functional and working and the population is not screaming and yeah. crying, and we are supposedly a developing nation... Mm. Would it be a bad idea for mm. the next 50 years I know where this is going. to adopt Tiedra. Russia, Authority. Chinese policies, <laughs> and then later on bring in your free market capitalism? Because so, currently, you guys are pushing for it, you like it, but an. it doesn't look like it's serving the people. And the people we have now mm. seem to mimic those nations in yeah. terms of they come from struggle. Yeah. Why would you want to copy and paste? Like literally, you're going to Ekasi and you're saying, 
yeah, but look at Cape Town, it works. Yeah. So let's copy Cape Town. You're like, no, no, no. no, no Cape no, Town no. worked over time. Yes. And for them to work, they had to enslave and exploit yes. and steal and get so yeah. empires of built of can, slaves. Can we maybe mm. as Ikasi say, look, this is gonna be a horrible example, and yeah. I apologize, it's just an example. Yeah. Can we not as Tembisa, Alex, or Sizweni, Danzani say, Yeah, we will go and, and colonize other smaller places. Yeah. We will sell our agendas. We will enslave Mozambicans, Malawians, and get them to build our cars into something special and unique and prosper. And then once we're fine, then we'll copy Cape Town. Let me jump but in. But we can't do it now. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. This is the biggest issue that I have with the South African government. Our labor laws do not gear us to economic growth. Let me, let me make a simple example. The government will give you 350 rand for you and say, hey, I'll say Benz. Uzimasa starts a business in the Eastern Cape. He wants to employ people on his farm. He has the ability to employ 20 people at 2,000 rand. Ne? Government says, nah, employ five at 4,000 rand minimum wage. Correct. So, 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 so I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm going... I could take out 10 people and make them economically active. You want to tell me at what level I can do that. Correct. But you as the government are still giving those same people 350. But you're saying, Ninga seven is going to a nigga in 2000. So, so my example... It's, it's exactly the, that. I'm the, saying... The, the I'm company, saying the, the, the minimum wage, yeah. the labor laws are being set looking at established companies yes. that built their wealth. Yes. Of exploitation yes. and stealing. Yes. And you're not allowed to do that as a as and, an and, upstart. And, and don't even make it as if it's a bad thing. When we employ more people in the country, right? We sort out a lot of the social ills, esinazo, in our communities. Do you know what blows my mind? Sorry, just on yeah. this topic. There was a time when uh, our farmers were really struggling in yeah. this country. They couldn't pay their loans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there was droughts or whatever. Yeah. They were struggling. I think there may have been, <laughs> speak about farm murders. I think I may have heard of stories of two white farmers who took their lives. Suicide, yeah. I remember. Suicide, yeah. yeah it's, I remember. You know. And um, in my head, I was like, how does a, a young black boy mm. compete with a fifth generation white farmer yeah. who got their land for free, if yeah. not for dirt cheap, yeah. have had generation of generation of yeah. exploited cheap labor, accumulated livestock, had the apartheid government give them subsidies yeah. and funding, have the ANC government give them whatever yeah. assistance they can get, get the land bank and the yeah. whatever to help them. And they are still struggling. Yeah. How do you compete when you have to try and raise funding to buy the land yeah. and you have to pay fair wage it's, and you have it's to... What, it's what I, I struggle with, and, right? And uh, I, I think of that example. Then I look at the Helen Suzman Foundation yeah. and how so many white people Wee. will have restaurants and hire Zimbabweans that, 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 that fight against and go against labor laws. These people are undocumented because they can underpay them. Mm. And you're like... We, You've got white people saying we're struggling. Mm. We want to defend the immigrants. Yeah. Which is a form of slave labor. <laughs> and then you want young black disadvantaged kids to come in and play mm. in the economy mm. when established apartheid British colonial beneficiaries mm. are struggling and, mm. and they are using mm. slave labor. They are cutting corners, mm. but they have reserves. They have money. They yeah. have land they have access to market yeah we are still coming in and we are not allowed we are not allowed to enslave and yes. use undocumented mm. and exploit and this has been one of my arguments i said to two tabs at once yeah. when they were still based in melville yeah and i said to him one of the mindsets we don't understand is the immigrant mindset of why i'll use a nigerian and i apologize i'll use a, Ni uh, a nigerian will come in and then sell drugs yeah and get involved in prostitution and pimping because no one will give them a job. They don't have the papers. No mm. one will, whatever. They like, this is the only way for me to build. Mm. Later on when I'm rich, I will then set up a decent company and my kids will go to a good school and mm. I will speak. Mm. And people say, that guy is bad. And I'm like, that guy has shown you how white people built their wealth. But he's done it in the now. And you're telling us we can't commit the atrocities, but we have to, com we have to comp compete with these people on, on, on an equal on footing. On an equal footing. 
It's the same it's thing. Very disrespectful. And then when we look at Russia and China and what they've built, and you can yeah. call them all the names you want with yeah. propaganda. They built it off their people. We're like, and they did it off their people. They yeah. didn't even enslave others. Ah. You guys w- were that's, worse. That's what I'm saying about the, your, your your thing about the hood. I'm saying, don't even look for people to, in your context, enslave. Sure. I'm saying, let us have a decentralized labor system for industries that we want to push and grow. Agriculture. The, the Pakistanis have done that with spaza shops. Agriculture. They don't, they don't enslave black South Africans. They enslave themselves. Yes. Agriculture is one of the more progressive uh, growth industries that we should focus on. One, it helps us to ensure food security. That's one. But two, we can sell our produce, right? Now, when you look at it from that perspective, if that's what I'm seeing, when, when, when I go home, I'm like, dude, you guys are not doing anything. Because yes. if you're saying to somebody, that I can, I can start a small farming operation, the government don't get involved in this thing. I'm going to pay 2,000 rand to every single person who works there. I'm going to make sure that some of the produce goes to them and they're able to feed their families. So I'm doing a chicken operation. I'm doing a cabbage operation. I'm doing a pig operation. I'm doing spinach and I'm doing other things. I'm doing a tilapia. I've got a nice little ecosystem that I've built there, which actually doesn't cost a lot of money. But then labor, I need labor because I can't mechanize a lalin. Mm. It, 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 won't, it won't sit well on my conscience if I've mechanized I'd rather not bring in the, the, the best machinery because there I need to get people to be active and their minds get dull. Then from there, I say, to you, I say to you, these people, I want to bank their money. They must bank through our mutual bank so that the value that I create from that fractional reserve banking goes back to them. I then take their kids and say to you, every kid that passes at this particular thing, I can give you here. You pass here, I take you to TVET. You pass here, I do this. But at the same time, I'm going to put you through courses where by the time you finish matric, you will have digital skills so that you are ready for this new thing. So if you are if you are inclined to do this, you can win here. If you're inclined to do this, you can win here. But you've got to use those micro economies to feed into each other so that this thing becomes a cycle where we can get those people in those areas out of this thing. But the government gets in the way because you, it... It doesn't make sense for Penwell to go and try and do this farming thing with the little bit of capital that he's, ma- he's been able to amass to go up against experienced associations, farming associations, all these things, and then still want to pay people that 4K when he knows that the other guys, right, on the other farms are using people that they're paying 1.5. So so, so, so so, the government likes to live in this world where they think that everybody is abiding by the laws. They don't abide by the laws. No they, one has ever asked this question. I heard rumors. I don't know if it's a fact. Yeah. That issue with the Palapala, yeah. apparently the people working on the farm were Namibians. Uh, apparently. I have to mm. emphasize. And if, they, if it is true, mm. how did they get here? What work permit do they have? Why would they come and work on a farm when we've got South Africans? And so even our government people, I'm just saying, yeah. some of them use it's opaque. foreigners and the whatever. Yeah. And some of them underpay. And, and um, it's, 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 you got to ask yourself. I was going to say yeah. this. So there's the push for universal basic income. Yeah. And part of the argument is the bulk of uh, Man, grant. We, lo- grant. We, we, love, we love socialist systems in this country. <laughs> Man. The, the bulk of uh, grant money is meant to go back to the incumbents. That's the argument. Because once you empower, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Once you empower a community and a nation. Yes. And if you're really visionary, at some point you'll want to de rand You'll want to be like, why, why don't we have our own currency? Why? So they need the people to be as dependent on them as possible. Who, who? The government? The government. Because the government is funded by the incumbents. Because they know if I give you 350, you'll spend it at ShopRite, at PEP, at this liquor, what, what, at KFC. And... If you come and you empower people, forget even the 2000. I wasn't even thinking 2000. I was thinking, I'm not going to pay you anything. Mm. Come work on my farm. I will house you. I will feed you. Your kids already study for free in this country. You already have free healthcare. I will give you airtime data or free Wi-Fi. And then every end of the week, I'll give you free booze. And there'll be a a screen for you guys to watch sports, whatever. And when you need clothes, I'll get you clothes to wear. Because so, so, I can't afford yeah. anything else. But we're trying to build something for the future. So, so I, I, But now that takes away from... 
the current guys that eat from the system. Because if you give someone three fifty, okay. it goes to the exact same businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it then flows trickle, back, and it never up. you yeah. never create a new trickle. There's no new money. Yeah, it trickles up. So. I don't say I, I, I don't want to say I, I don't agree with you fully on that because I believe that you should like in any other business uh, make provision for um, for for salaries. I don't believe then then you're not ready because I, my argument is that the the minimum labor the minimum cost of labor should not be centralized nationally. It should be done district, not even provincially. District wise, that's that's meant to be a no brainer. Yeah, uh, yeah the minimum uh, wage in Johannesburg shouldn't should be, not the, be minimum the minimum wage. Right, in Mutu. right. I, I understand, Lord, it's and and our retarded. government, our government likes to sign these things because they also don't actually write the laws. Oh, this is why, by the way, my friends that work in Newcastle yeah. can drive Mercedes Benzes, yeah, and we have to drive pop second hand cars here in Joburg because the of cost living. of living here is ridiculous. Bona, you living. work as a school teacher in Newcastle, uh, and you let's say you're making twenty thousand. What your twenty thousand can get you in Newcastle? On, on, and and government doesn't want to doesn't want to admit that this thing is wrong because you've also got centralized unions, and I have a, I have a huge issue with unions. I have a huge issue with unions. Every single year, every single union will have an issue, will create an issue, so that they can say to their people who pay twenty, thirty, forty, fifty rand a month that we fought for you this year. Yeah. Not that we fought for the right reason. We fought for you. Are you, are you guys. Are you willing to put in the work? Because people like you and I have ideas. And I, I personally believe a lot of these ideas need to sidestep government. Yeah. Are you, are you willing to put in the work? Are you, are you ready to lead? I think that... I have a the, wish. I have a wish. It's I have, inevitable. I have, I have a dream. It's, it's inevitable. I, I have a dream of a thousand yeah. youngish South Africans yeah. adopting yeah. areas yeah. and saying, this is going to be mine. Fuck national government, fuck bricks, yeah. fuck whatever. Because yeah. that's what I was hoping when Lux was doing with Soweto. Yeah. I'm going to adopt this area. Yeah. I will travel the world. I will meet famous rich people. I'll, I will do I'll everything funds, in yeah. my power yeah. to turn this area into Stellenbosch, mm. this area into Dubai. Yeah. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to make sure that if we have any farming produce, mining, the kids here are going to study. Yeah. A thousand yeah. South African kids, and yeah. I'm, I guess I'm, my question is: if if that was to be an idea, vision, yeah. do you think you're ready to put your hand up and be like, I, I want to be one of the thousand? I I already am, right? I already am because it, it, the most important thing that you have to do is that you can't give from an, an an empty cup, and you've got to look at the most cost efficient way of doing that and empowering people one mentally, but two literally, right, sure. and physically. So. The idea of going backwards and creating something, right, Emakai, means that if it ever fell, right, if this system ever collapsed, you would still be able to sustain yourself and the people around you within that area. Then you would form new communities because if the system that we are in right now ever falls apart, with a full tank, I'm driving back to the Eastern Cape. Like, if, 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 if it ever said, hey, it's, it's over. Like, Ishili Koli, they bombed it or whatever, <laughs> and South Africa's at war. Fight a chance at the BRICS summit. Because there, I know the lay of the land. I know how things work there. And I know there that there is land to work. That's also the other thing. So I've got to set that up first before I can become part of that thousand. I need to make sure that it doesn't matter. Uzimasa, in this 21st century, Plug it in, Wi-Fi, Starlink, or whatever other system, or if they do, yes, China, the clock in English system, I can still talk to people, this is the list to some parts, I can still talk to people, but my actual impact on the ground is to the people next to me. I don't feel that I can do anything in Johannesburg anymore other than to take out, because I've given Joburg my, I've given it 16, 17 years of my life. How, much, how much do you think that would cost this, um, Exit plan of sorts. If you were uh, to give a rough estimate, and not specific to yeah, you, I think, but just I, as an idea, I think, I think, um, uh, give a realistic number, not a ten, retirement figure. No, 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 ten, ten bar. That's a lot of money. I think it's even, too much. Even at five, remember, you still have to buy the farm. I can't go no, over forget, the details. Forget the nitty gritties. I'm going back to my idea of a million, of a thousand yeah. kids. So, so people, and it's like, how much would we need to give these kids to adopt a region? So, and so, say we will give you a house. 
a farm i hear what you're asking or me. whatever so, so, so that so you can what's the min- basically to make it simpler for people to understand you're saying what's the minimum amount of money every single month that this person for them to in order, in order for them to live for this ideal that they would need to have is that what you're asking maybe we me? can make it monthly i yeah. was talking yeah more, monthly yeah we want you to serve in an obscure place and you're going to yeah. adopt a community of 10,000 people yeah that you're going to go out into the world and be like my people my yeah. people these are yours and then you must make it futuristic you must make it productive so, so, and whatever so but we have to back we have to back that entire system with a an underlying sort of like infrastructure and pipeline and i don't think we have we have the the muscle to do that because in order for us to it's the same argument that we have and say why don't certain classes of people get into politics right why aren't you in politics right mm-hmm. why am i not in politics mm-hmm. right because there is there is an instability that exists in that system that doesn't tend well to how you want to live your life so this wouldn't be a uh, political by yeah, the way. no no i'm just saying i'm right? just trying to figure uh, out a budget in my head so, so i'm if saying we, if we can find these kids I'm we saying, need 10 billion yeah i'm saying and ten, then find the kids make ten, sure that the money does what it's supposed current, to do on current rates serve. on current rates i think in south africa on 50k take home you, you would be able to start something 50k take home okay so after that, everything that's, that's fair 50k because for a thousand kids to go and serve communities and be like whatever you, whatever the community makes yes, for you you yeah, can make 5 million a whatever, month because but, your community is but thriving to base you and take you there in order for you to try and take these ideologies these uh, systems we will 50k i think 50k is more than enough anywhere in south africa outside of these core provinces i think 50k is enough for you to be like i and remember the other thing is ideology because certain people want the gucci bucket hats right that's the problem you can't get those people you got to get ideology. no you definitely you gotta, can't get yeah, those people you got to get ideologically sound people that actually want to affect change but there's got to be a plan mchita because also we're getting a lot of kids whose parents got money have got money now black as well right mm. i mean billions right mm. quiet billionaires and there's a th- that wealth is now being transferred so those people are now becoming banks and you know a lot of them right who but we need to be able to say to these people you can break off 100 mil for a farming thing there to own the land and mm. let people work it mm. you can't break it off cuz ubabako uhambile usele nale mali uzoyenzani you're going to put in capital markets here's, sure. a, here's a legacy project yeah, ta- this ta- is this is your tatuhanyama ta- trust i'll be the king ta- but ta- ta- you'll, million, you'll get to make most of the ta- money 200 million ufakela and let's 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 uplift that area but not just for vibes sure. for profit mchita yeah. because south africans that own money are not investing in south africa there's trillions of rands sitting in trusts and savings accounts mm. this is a problem in fact the biggest cry from those that own money is that oh there's nothing to invest in south africa no mchita you there's a lot to invest in south africa you just don't find it ideo- ideologically prudent for you to do that um You asked me my experience of China um I'd mm. like you to speak about China. I think we've covered the big yeah. summit somewhat. Uh we need to push for this thing of decentralizing labor laws yeah. and probably a whole lot of other laws as well. Yeah. Um we need to at some point or we need to keep re bringing up this thing because it's one of the conversations I have with white people. Yeah. Specifically when we debate Jacob Zuma where yeah. I'm like Zuma, if if ever Zuma had a pure heart wanting to uplift black people mm. he's never going to get to do it on your terms mm. so it would need him to be corrupt it would need him to need him to place his people in strategic spaces yeah. so they can loot money so they can build so that yeah. he doesn't have to come with this begging bowl at the next election campaign and say hey rich white people give me money because he doesn't need it anymore mm. that's why he would have had to do what he did so for black kids to win they cannot play at the same level And yeah. look our government shame to their credit they they've tried with the various funding agencies and the seeders of this world but because they're so distracted with their comfortable lives and yeah. and parliament and yeah. you almost need guys on the ground who can mm. get these budgets mm. to be like uh, we will drive this thing yeah. i will be your liaison for yeah. soweto at the NEF yeah. at the IDC to yeah. be like these are the things we're doing i'm going to mm. go to the department of sports mm. and make sure that our stadiums and everything are functioning and 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 Um I think we covered it um I'm relatively yeah. happy Action SA made a mistake I don't know if Herman is going to retract it's probably too late because yeah. he's shown his I wouldn't he's call his true cards. colors his cards but it's kind of like now that you've said it it's gone 
You yeah. can come back and be like, look, I was mistaken. No, no he, like, thought, he thought there, was in, there were enough people that don't like Briggs. He thought there were enough people but that he's, would... But he's, he's speaking to funders and not voters. Yeah, 100%. And this is the argument of politicians. What yeah. business are you in? Julius, generally, except he doesn't speak his Zulu or Nguni language, yeah. which is his flop. Yeah. And if ever someone wants to be a better version of Julius, mm. say everything Julius is saying, but in his Zulu, is mm. closer. Uh, because Julie. that speaks to the... To the Vagal. hearts of people. Yeah. Yes, that's truly. Um, you're in the business of maximizing votes. Mm. Yes, you're also in the business of maximizing funding. Yeah. But the 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 conversations you have in closed private spaces with funders mm. is very different to the conversation you you're have, meant to have on platforms where with you, the populace. you must tell your funders, mm. guys, is this thing going to go live? Is this thing going to be heard by voters? Mm. I cannot be free market. Yeah. I cannot be pro-West. Yeah. Because you guys are sending me for an assignment. Yeah. And the assignment is, bro, go get, get power. Go get votes. Go get votes. Yeah. Get that power. And then once you have it, Nelson Mandela, this mm. is the sellout argument. Mm. Nationalization of the mines and the what mm. what. Go to the World Economic Forum. Come yeah. back after chatting with Margaret Thatcher. Mm. Let's park nationalization Gangnan. for now. Gangnan. But we'll give you guys free housing, mm. free schooling. And you're like, okay, I, it's whatever. So I, I think that RTP. was a flop from him. Um, China. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know you asked me a question. Yeah. Uh, Umwe, the off-camera, also asked me about China. And I told him, look, I've been to China. I'm trying to think now. Maybe four, between four and six times. Mm -hmm. And the last time I went now, I was going to visit my kids. Because mm. he was like, you guys come back from China and you sound different. I'm like, look, <laughs> Umu Shtafa was on a China tour, mm, yeah. an excursion. Mm. So he came to South Africa and visited the provinces. Mm. I went to Joburg to see my kids. Yeah. Completely, completely different, different experience yeah. but I've, I've experienced China and I've got my opinions I got to experience Russia for the first time and it's not fair because I was in a tourist area St. Yeah. Petersburg yeah. stunning yeah. It's tourist you send yeah. someone to South Africa to Cape Town Camps Bay yeah. ah, and yeah. you're like how's South Africa you're like bro, bro. it's like ah <laughs> so I can't speak yeah. with authority about Russia at yeah. all I'd like to hear your expedition to China yeah um we all now have become sensitive. Yeah. Who funded it? Who paid for it? Yeah. What is the agenda? When yeah. you sent there, would go speak well about China. <laughs> so, so I was there as part of a, a media trip that was sponsored, right? So I was there. ENCA was there. SABC was there. Newsroom Africa was there, right? This is clear. This was... Who, who sponsored it? The government of China. Thank you, Debs. Ow. As part of the BRICS, as part of the pre-BRICS summit, so that we could all. No, you need to say these things. No, yes, no, I yes. want to say, I want to say, it's important for intelligent beings, yeah, to respect their audience, which our politicians don't do, yeah, and to say, guys, I was funded by the Penal Show Water, yeah. um, so. I'm going to say everything. Some of it might be negative. Yes. But I want you to remember I was funded by the penal show. Yes. Water. And, so and that whoever's reading it yes, and can decide if they think it was biased or not. And, the, and the Most people do not say that. And yes. it ends up... So be, we say it, it. It ends up being awkward for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a trip where multiple South African houses, media houses... Especially the biased ones. <laughs> mainstream. <laughs> so... South African media houses were taken to China as part of the pre-BRICS uh, summit to experience the country and actually write from a perspective of having been there. Correct. This was important. Correct. Because the Western media will tell you one thing about China, CNN, but you must go Fox, to China. Yes. And the like. So this is very important. I like how you, you, you preface this by saying, you go there to a particular place to so go see your kids. Yeah, yeah. We traveled the country. We started in Beijing. And we had engagements with even South African, the South African embassy there, right? And we asked them, we said, as part of, as, how is it for you guys, right? That's where it started. We went to understand media. All media in China is owned by the government. All of it, my brother, not even a single one. We have a podcast, or it's a government, but for the podcast, yako. I like it. Right? I like it. I like it. And it's it's a different system. It, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. If you're watching this and you go, hi, why? Do? It doesn't matter how you feel about it. This is how they want to live their way Correct. of life. Now, this don't be sucked in by the West. Yes. This is the it, important it, thing. So uh, we've, been thing, we've been taught to challenge. If you're Things watching this and you're that getting work. that feeling, you're saying, alone. Yeah. No, 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 no. Your father is so uh, strict. Uh, uh. It's my father. This is it's how our household. They want to do it. And we look like we're winning. Yes. That's the other now, important thing. I want to get to that winning part. 
Now, I went to about four to five cities in, in China. We started in Beijing. Now, Beijing is, is very much administrative, but it's, it's, it's spectacular. It's 20 something, 20 something million people, right? Crazy. It's a third of South Africa in that city. And it is more about administration. This is where all of the embassies are. This is where all Pretoria. of the, yeah, it's Pretoria, right? Yeah. This is where all that stuff is. But there's, there's huge economies in there, right? Huge economies, just on the outskirts. It's, they're pumping, there's factories there as well. It's just that you know of the other places that are factories, but there's factories in Beijing as well. They push there. But leave Beijing. We went to one of the six poorest provinces, mm -hmm. which is um, uh, Gui, um, Guizhou. Are we Guizhou right? squad? <laughs> Guizhou. Yeah. And we were in Guiyang as the start, which is the capital city. Yeah. The capital city of one of their poorest provinces has four to five million people, just that city. Joburg has six million. Yeah. I want to give you a, this is the, the perspective. Perspective is very important. Perspective. We then travel, by the way, that province, by decree of the CCP, they made that, they said, this province will house all of the data centers in China, the poorest province. They said, you can't build a data center. If you want to hold our data, we put it there. We will create the frameworks and the infrastructure. There are 37 data centers in that province, one of the poorest provinces, because they don't want to leave that province behind. Correct. They want that province to have something. Right? Sharp. That's a start. Nina. Oh, I'm going to catch flames. I'm not going to mention the poorest province in the country. You guys will be the water boys when the Springboks play. <laughs> you, <laughs> KZN, Newcastle, you can be captain. Cool. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, but anyways, you want to yeah. be part of the game. You got to be, you got to be, wanna be part of, you got to, right? yeah. So then we drove about a good, maybe four to five hours from this place. We went to a village that they clearly say to you, this was a mud hut village. They don't hide that. They say, Be, this was bad. It's not even shack, bro. This was mud hut village. There were no roads. People had to literally climb up from a mountain, cliff down to get something. This place now has the fifth, the fifth highest uh, freestanding bridge in the world. They've built a resort for, that is run by the rural people there, right? That has visitors on a daily basis. They've got... They've got boats. On, they've created an economy for these people. And this is not me saying this. They are, we went there and we saw it for ourselves. And also, it was captured. We spoke to people there. Sure. It's there. There's footage, right? It's, 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 propaganda. it's not it's how serious. we feel. It's not, we would stop people on the street and be like, no, I hear can, you. can we chat to you? No, and I'm, I'm, was, I'm listening and to you and, and, and I'm right? getting emotional. The, the next, we, we drove, my brother, we drove for like five hours. Five hours through in their poorest province. And what they consider to be poor and what we consider to be poor are two different things. I did not see a single shack. I did not see a structure that I felt, hey, <laughs> but what they've done is that they put sheer numbers of people into whatever they want to reform. If it's Funulung Sakla province, we will take 100,000 Chinese people and they will build that province quickly. That province. Queen Agipa must fix it. You find that when it comes to things like recreation, they've built their own, they call it the VBA, right? Village mm -hmm. basketball. They've got their own things. Mm -hmm. They create their own things for their people, right? Because they don't want outside influence that's going to change how their people see the progress that needs and where the road we need to go. They yeah. control that. Now, is that a good or a bad thing? I don't really care because that's how they want to live their life. And should we police them for doing that? No, we shouldn't. And it's not to say that there aren't things that happen within within powerful nations. There are things that are always going to be wrong. They are not sitting there going, ah, young intira, right la, si sharp la. Mm. There's obviously things that don't make sense about the place. Yeah. There's obviously things where you go, Ish, but there's there's that corner of the thing. But then also in the West, you know, Flint, Michigan doesn't have clean water. Mm. Still, still namchange. Ziakala, you can't drink the tap water. Mayor Ziakula trying to do publicity stunts. Hey, Flint, but ni e Haman Skral ya se. Hey, Ziakala. So my 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 feeling around what this was is that we were taken across. No, we're still at the poorest village. The poorest From village. From Beijing, yeah. Yeah. we went to Quijo Squad. Yeah, Quijo, and then we Sorry, left. Be, before before you leave, uh, yeah. Why I got emotional is there was a time when the ANC was campaigning. I don't think it was 2019. I think it was the elections before that where. 
I almost wished I could get a tender for their marketing. Yeah. Um, having been born in 1986 and having family members that live as Lali in Emakaya, mm. uh, I have watched firsthand from when the ANC took over in 94 to today, mm. places that did not have roads. Yeah. Places that had mud huts that yeah. today have RTPs. Yeah. Places where they've built schools, where mm. they've built clinics. Mm. Uh, where taxis now drive on tarred roads, mm. where even at my grand's house where we used to shit in a bucket, mm. now there's a flushable toilet. My mm. my grand sister where there's a long drop where mm. we used to get a, a paraffin lamp. Yeah, we used to fetch water with the wheelbarrow. The development. Yeah, and the ANC makes me so angry on so many levels. Mm. And one of the things that makes me angry is their inability to sell the amazing work that they've done. Yeah, in this country. Yeah. To take the same journalists, SABC, ENCA, Newsroom, and be like, we want to take you and we want you to sit with Koko here. As much as people complain about the yeah. ANC and yeah. be like, Koko, what would you Yeah. Nanu wakaniye, Buga, today you've got a tap that opens. They, when it comes to propaganda, accurate propaganda, propaganda, mm. the ANC fucking sucks balls, bro. Because mm. they've, they've fucked up in the past. 10 whatever years but there was a time when the things they were building i mean if there you look tangible, at tangible progress if you look at us and the english we're speaking and what we've seen and look it's there not was, directly them yeah, yeah but the platform it feels to like there was a plan it feels global like, citizens it feels like there was a plan it breaks my heart it feels like i'm just listening to that and i'm like but we've been able to do some of this shit but no one fucking talks about it and no one is continuing to carry on with that mm. story of yeah. Yes, we tarred the roads, but we've gone beyond tarring the roads. Yeah. Now the lights are we've, all solar. We've, we've created now we've created we've got sustainability. Wi-Fi. Now we've actually built industry. Now we've yes. Sorry, please yeah. continue from so from we, the village. We yeah, to, we went to uh, we went to uh, Huahu village, right? This is the village that I'm I'm speaking of. Yeah, and from that village, after that, we went to Kaili City. Oh, Kaili. <laughs> What is it called? Kaili City. Kaili. Mm. Yeah. Now this is where I say to people. This is when I got the the truest reflection of the average, I'd say Chinese person, yeah. because we got there quite late. It was a Friday night, and we looked outside from from the hotel, and we saw cars parked outside and people sitting outside having drinks, chilling. And I said to myself, "Cutting, cutting you off, So I took I took a screenshot of uh, I I went to the translator app. While I was still in the hotel, Dapala, do you have Wi-Fi? So, uh, do you have uh, a hotspot so that we can speak? And I screenshotted that because I don't have any access to anything outside of the hotel because I didn't do an eSIM. I then went down to the people. People were so friendly. I then show them this thing. They're like, oh, oh, oh. Then they then they put me into their Wi-Fi. Then we speak via the translator app. I'm telling you, I went with the guys What, that I was with. A, what's like a translator app? So you can. Uh, it's basically an app that translates from English to Mandarin. In voice, yeah, in voice and in in words. So you can either show them the writing, or they or, can hear, or it. they can hear it. Yeah, I was in Ningbo yeah. at a hotel, and the guy working at the hotel can't speak English for yeah. shit. The yeah. cities there, no, no, no one. We were colonized. Yes, so in we our think, heads, we, we think, think everyone, everyone should, should speak, speak English. English. Yeah, no. so you get there, they don't know English for shit. They don't yeah. even call South Africa South Africa. Yeah. So if you're like South Africa, they're, they're like, like uh, uh, what the fuck what, are you talking about? about? Yeah. So this guy was just yo. So yes. I had to tell him which language I was speaking. Yes. Because we make assumptions. I yes. could be speaking Portuguese. Yeah. That guy doesn't fucking know the difference. Doesn't care. So I have to tell him which language I'm speaking. Yeah. And then from there, he took out this gadget and then I'd speak into the gadget and, and listen. Hear, and be like, oh. Then he'd speak exactly. and then the gadget would be like, yes. looking for a taxi. I'm yeah. like, now, dope ass. This I, is a Google translator. This, this was the, the native Apple one. The native. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, Google, Facebook things are not allowed unless you have VPN, which is private. Mkokotelo. Connection. Via, via, yeah, preacher. Yeah, preacher. Basically, yeah. But more often, this is YouTube, Google, Facebook, bridge, bridge Instagram, network. WhatsApp in China. Yeah. Melusha i. Preaching. Uh, is nyoga nyoga. Melusha i illegal connection, Baba. Yeah, so, VPN. So, so then I went down, right? Yeah. To go just chill with these people and speak to them, bro. Mm. The most chilled people ever, and that's when you truly understand people. Et yo, et yo aleni. <laughs> we set, we set a chualin. Like if there's ever a time where people are going to show you who they are, say chualin, yeah. bro. People didn't want us to leave. We go from this table. The next guys have seen us and we're chilling with those guys. They're like, come here. Sure. They're like, no, we want to sit. They're like, where are you from? The, you're chatting via this app. Yeah. You go to the next. You try to walk to the past. The, South Africa, I think, uh, is Nanfe. Is in it China? I think it's Nanfe. Please just, carry on. Yeah, just check. So, for me, that's where I got an understanding of what this place is and what it creates. China allows. 
small businesses, medium-sized businesses to compete amongst each other to become bigger. Nanfei, yeah, Nanfei. Yeah, yeah, if you're ever in China, you're like, Nanfei. They'll be like, ah. ah. <laughs> so they create this infrastructure and this competitive env environment in business in China so that the best businesses that fight against other Chinese businesses within this 1.4 billion people market rise to the top and then they back you to go glo globally. This, this is our, our rugby systems are like that, by the way. Yes. From primary school, yes. Craven Week, you, Grand Homo Week, yes. the schools playing against each other. And, and then the best then among the best. those go to SA and then from the SA, we take you globally. This This is clear. This is how they do it. So what you find is that when it comes to their cars, Penwell, that's when I realized, because I did, we went and we were shown uh, IM Motors, which is Intelligent Motors, which is uh, one of their biggest groups, uh, Psych Motors, right? That we've they, never heard of. They own, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, own, they also own MG, the British brand, but the West will never tell you that, that the Chinese own fully that brand. <laughs> so they took us to a lab where they sh the new cars are going to come out from IM Motors, right? LS7, L, uh, LS7 and the L7, right? SUV and a sedan. And these guys are going to, they, the Chinese are, are reformers. They believe that if an idea works somewhere else and they feel like it could work at home, they implement it very fast. They don't They don't wait to be like, we need a commission of inquiry to see if this thing could work. Oh, why is, that, why, set, why is your boy uh, catching strays? We need to set up a, because I don't, I feel that the bureaucratic processes that that exist in South Africa and Africa, right, are meant to slow us down. They, they are, are meant, meant to slow, to us, slow down. us down in terms of decision making. Correct. So these people are moving at such a fast rate, and government stimulates things so fast that when I was there, I kept on asking, "What are these green number plates?" And the guy said, "No, those are electric cars." I said, "So many?" He said, "Yeah." The government 10 years ago decided that we needed to do this thing. They funded everyone. So if a car was going to cost 150,000, say it cost 80,000, but if it's electric. So everyone goes, why should I buy that petrol car that cost me 150,000 when my starter car can be this car that cost me 80,000? Boom. Boom, everybody has electric cars. You, It's almost, it's crazy to consider. that That's all it took and everyone and went that's, electric. That's, that's what happens. And, uh, you know, to Julius Malema and uh, Gates and McKenzie, when you visit these countries, mm. you realize when leaders are in control yes what you can do what you when can you achieve. are in control when all of the levers and levels of government are singing and same hymn sheet in and south business. africa business is above government yes in countries like china and russia government is above business the, the, business has to report their currency and is if called, it doesn't work the currency is called the renimbi what that means is that they call it imali mm. the people's the money people's money so in other words think about that even if you are jack ma you oh. are auna mali wena imali abantu you are you holding the people. you are yes you are holding imali abantu ayo yakho la mali imali abantu i want to give a shout out to uh, albert van veik mm. um he's got a, a reality show i think on cakenet called mark may a millionaire mm. uh, make me a millionaire where he goes to afrikaans high schools mm. and he's got these young entrepreneur kids competing with each other yeah it's a reality show and then they given a certain amount of time to make the most amount of money. Yeah. I sat with DJ Spool last year and I don't know who else and I was saying, I'm, I'm going back to that thing of rugby. Yeah. And what you were saying about the best businesses. Yeah. We need to make entrepreneurship an extra sexy. mural in our schools. We need to make it sexy. We need to make it an extra mural. There need to be local competitions. They need to be regional. They yep. need to be, and then you yep. need to be like, this is the, Whoever's running whatever today, yeah. Or oh, I won the South African Championships because I made ten million back yeah. in two thousand and six, and you're yeah. like, you were that kid. Yeah, I fucking rooted for you. Like, yeah, yeah I was that kid. Today, yeah. I run this company. That, yes. And if we claim we want to create an entrepreneurship culture, yeah, you need entrepreneurship to become an extra mural, like debating, yes, like chess, yeah, like rugby, and have the competitions and have kids be like, I make this much, and have other kids watching from the side mm. from grade six be like, shit, that guy sells this. This guy is pushing that. He's in the first that. team for entrepreneurship. He's in first team and I'm I'm going to be better than him. Yes. And you've got kids in grade eight playing first team because this kid sells and that, and that whatever does, it is. is and selling. that does two things. Eh? It also uh, inculcates the values of understanding money deeply. 100%. Right? It, it also does that. It comes so, with a lot of things. This is why the Chinese and the Indians are so good because 
Trading Traders. is in their nature. Yeah, they just tell. trade yeah. as a way of life. Yes. Sorry, the people's money check mine. Why is gone so quiet? Yeah. So it's because the government calls the shots, yes. which is different from us. You're like, but this billionaire, Johan mm. Rupert, Cyril can't summon Johan Rupert and yes. tell him this won't fly. Bad. In China, the yeah. Chinese Communist Party, Abu Xi Jinping. Mm. If it's not in line with the vision with for the, the people, plan. once you think you're bigger than, Go same to, with Abu Putin, once you think you're bigger than the country and the people, to, uh, uh, you get cut down to size and they're like, uh, not here. Go to as Auzulamba, but you in this does are they'll never blow the same way. In fact, say it was like a company, say it hard. So, say it was like and uh, yes, the guys say, are getting to you. Say it was like I sit with these guys, I have the most amazing time with these guys. Yeah. Because in that environment, you are you get to ask questions freely. Mm. You get to ask, how is life in Kylie City? They're like, we like it here. Mm. They even, in, in that place, which is five hours away from the, the capital city of one of the poorest provinces, they brought... Jimmy Butler from America to host the uh, village basketball competition. Yeah. This is this is how much this is how much time and money and 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 I'd say resource, energy mm. that these guys put into ensuring that their people are looked after because they know that 1.4 billion people being mad is a problem. Yeah. So you must create a good enough environment for these people to see the opportunities of prosperity and upward mobility. Sorry to disturb you. Yeah. Do we still have time? Still have time. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So they know that they, they can create, they must create the conditions for these people to have an, a, an opportunity for upward mobility. Now, moving from there, we then obviously, we, we went to their crown jewel. We went to Shanghai. Oh, Capital city, boy. We went to we, that place. It's the capital city, right? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Beijing is the capital. Beijing's city. the capital. But that is the financial capital of the of the East, and I dare say it's going to be the capital city of the world. Johannesburg, Shanghai is Johannesburg. Oh, uh, Beijing is because because we've got to put it into yes, we've got to put it into okay. context. But uh, let me tell you, there's there's like what's the, what's the math? It's there's like six Joe bags in that thing. No. Yeah, maybe five job People in. don't know how tiny Gauteng as a province is, yes. just in relation to South African provinces. Yes. With the amount of people and activity. That happens. And if you ever take time, go study a map, look at the size of Gauteng. Yeah. That's Gauteng, including Tuane yeah. and City Bang or whatever at the bottom yeah. there. Look at the size of Gauteng and then look at the size of Johannesburg. Mm. Just here. There's nothing Six stopping million. you from replicating Johannesburg or Gauteng in the Val, provinces. In the yeah. Val, just take it to the Val. You so so. I wanted to ask if you've ever seen a documentary uh, by Vice on YouTube where Dennis Rodman and the Harlem Globetrotters went to visit Kim Jong Un in North Korea. Korea. I've seen I've seen snippets of it. Yeah, please please go watch it, and I hope anyone who's going to be watching this, listening to this, is going to go check it out as mm. well. Um, it is very important. Trevor Noah spoke about this prejudice struggles to hold up against contact. Yeah. You need to take certain people who are very anti other people yeah. and go immerse them into a culture. Remember what I without, said? Without platforms. giving them a script. Yeah. And then just let them engage and let them come back and be like, oh, that place is shit. And you're like, sure. Platforms. At least now it's your own experience. Yes. That's why we need platforms that bring differing views together in one place. Yeah. They took us to Shanghai, right? Joburg boy, big boys. Ah, Santa Lalela boy. Going down. Lalel, I want to also put into context for people. I've been to New York, been to Washington, I've been to Amsterdam, I've been to a certain number of places where people go, Yaz, ya keep up. I know I landed in Shanghai and I gag. I now understand why these guys are worried about this place. You guys are fucking play. I, 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 they, they are I, playing. I've, I've never been to Shanghai. A close friend of mine, Siabule Lang Nang, we've mm. had him here. He went to Shanghai a few years ago. He came back and different no man you, you know once you've traveled to certain places yeah you can't come back the same that's why he was different he came, he came back, back he's like we are 100 years behind <laughs> we are 100 years behind china and you're like bro calm yeah. down but 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 calm remember, down. but remember there are there are different types of people we can look at the same thing but not feel the same the, the same about Correct. it and also not not see it the same way Correct. i came back from this so hyper motivated to do something about my life because i said no 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 if I've had the opportunity to go see what's happening there, I am taking it upon myself to try to go back there every three months because there's nothing for me in the West. I saw it. Take, pe take people with you. 
That's the why, key. Why, why shouldn't you're right? Why should I, I? I sat with Bobby why Petkoff. I? I sat with Bobby Petkoff from Midmac Motors. Yeah, I saw, I, I, saw, as well. I saw the interviews. Yeah, and I said to him, if we want to move into first world public transport, yeah. of which the taxi industry is not public transport. Yeah, it's, it's as much public transport as ShopRite is a public and retailer. We, we need to move the taxi industry up the chain. By the way, we need to get them into busing, which takes more of cars off the road, and we need to get them 100%. into trams, and then get them into high speed rail. So what we, I told so Bobby must do that. is. They're going to be resistant. And how you do it is you take taxi owners yeah. and some taxi drivers to these countries. Yes. Just let them go and experience Bubble, the subways no, and then let them come back. Yes. They will be the ambassadors yes. on your behalf. And and the other thing you've... You Tell know, us about Shanghai, bro, so, and why, so Shanghai, why, why we're going to be organizing a trip for 100 people to go visit and why, yes, yes, and why not? We, and must, think, we must make it happen. Okay, yeah. Let's, we'll, t- we'll talk about sure. it off. So what I saw in Shanghai was was a a truly cultural city i mean even even the people that we were with right our chaperones the, you could see the, the the glint in their eyes when they were in, and they, these are people that live in china <laughs> where they're like when we landed in shanghai these people were like, like ah oh, china in jani bafo we've taken you to the more bureaucratic thing we've taken you to our poorest province where they were even they were like oh yeah but super and we're like sitting there going super gabani up they're like, oh, when we landed in Shanghai, even the people were with, they were like, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, say China, la. say China, Jakala, la. And even I land, dude, I landed and I literally took out my phone and I started recording. I was like, you? And we landed like, well, 10, 10 at night. Mm. Good light, I'm trying to man. It's lights. Good. The city is awake. Yeah. The city is awake. Like, I'm going shop as Valueo. I'm trying to get pushed, get pushed, get pushed. And it's important for people to understand that you, you don't just get to that. You don't just get to, prosper, to prosperity. Funeka uhambe through a period yen chungu. Yes. You must go through suffering. Correct. You must go through sacrifice as a nation. Si songa, si vumba. We are sacrificing that generation. I mean, for South, Africa, for South Africa to be what it, it was, you have to give a shout out, and I, I apologize for this, to the British colonialists and the apartheid government. Because there was a lot of pain, but we boast as black people yeah. that uh, we about, live about in, our, about in the infra- better off. About our infrastructure relative to, to our African brothers. We, we do do that. It's and just then, it wasn't done by our black leaders, yeah. and they didn't sell it to us but, but, so that we could buy it. But we we did build this country. Abandaba Correct. Myama built this country. And, and don't ever let anybody tell you differently. Abandaba Myama built, built this country. Yeah. And whenever people say to me that there's a possibility of us having food scarcity and whatnot and whatnot. I say to people, who's who are the actual farmers? Mm. The farming, farming. Yegi value chain of farming. Yeah, who yeah. are the actual farmers? Go buy number fugek seni. Go for buy your chong. But oh, is, are these chickens fed? Are the, is this done right? It's black people, sure. but we don't own the value chain. Correct. But the farming expertise, equity, we know that some of the best people that can um, that can farm in Komo, they come from Lesotho, and everyone knows that. So whenever there's an, a period where I want, where your cows are about to give birth, I know many farmers in the Eastern Cape that drive to Lesotho to go fetch these guys for birthing season, mm. and, and and we have the expertise. Right? It's just that we don't have access to capital. We don't have the frameworks that allow for us and the deliberateness from government that says we will support this movement of getting more people into agriculture and making agriculture free. If we have things that we want to do as a country, we must make it free. If we're saying this thing is free, education free, we must say, particularly this thing, we need engineers and it. Engineering is free in this country. We need doctors and it. Doc, being a doctor is free. We need uh, it's no agriculturalists. Brainer. It's a no brainer. Yeah. And I'm not saying that everybody else, your degree doesn't matter. There are just strategic degrees in this country all, that we all need. All degrees are equal, guys. And some are more, some, some are are more, just more, more equal, equal than, than others. others right? Sorry, let's go back to struggling and yes. suffering for Shanghai to be great. And yes. The importance of that mindset. And it's not a mindset for South Africa because people might miss some of these principles. Mm. It's, a, it's a lesson to yourself. Yeah. That you yourself... There's nothing stopping you from being a Shanghai in yes. your life. Yes. And it requires in you to your sacrifice and struggle. Or yes. whether it's your family. It's going to be tough. There's going to be beefing. There's going to be poisoning and witchcraft. Disagreements. And a lot of therapy. But if you like, I'm going to build a Shanghai family. In, in, inside community. me. Yeah. And it, these guys said one of the key ingredients is 
we need to have a plan, yeah. a long-term plan, and yeah. we need to understand there will be struggle yes. and sacrifice. And, and China plans in five-year terms, by the way, guys. They don't they don't stretch it. We don't. I don't want people to think that this is a long, long, long thing. China has a hundred-year plan. Ah. Econ he plan a hundred. Mara, see how many five? They are on their fourteenth five-year plan, Chana. Ak. Ziakala, go to what do we want to achieve? Now remember, whatever politician comes in there, you are not changing the plan, my boy. The plan ya vunyak dala. Go to a plan. I said you were at that same thing. You're part of the same party. Say vuma this thing. We're not going to change it now. We're going to continue with this plan. You are in this five-year plan and that other five-year plan. You continue with the plan. You can add to the plans. You don't change the plan. That's how you run it. Yeah. That's how they run it. So they had a plan to make Shanghai their number one city in terms of finances. And they said to themselves, okay, Sharp, we have a port here. We have money that comes in and out of here. This place is important to us. So we must make sure that this place grows faster than other places. For now, Shanghai is important. Just like how Hong Kong was consequential. It was Hong Kong's economy. His economy was massive. And they said we don't want to destroy what's happening in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is part of mainland China. It's not different. The, the West may tell you it's different, but Hong Kong Hong Kongers may have a different identity. But Hong Kong is a very interesting from, topic to for show, people that don't know. And to China. show them, to show the Aban Basel Hong Kong that you are part of us, just across the border, they built Shenzhen. Just to show you, what clever. Before you speak about Shenzhen, for people that don't know, uh, with the South African passport, you don't need a visa to visit Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, but for the rest of mainland China, you need a you need a visa. So yeah. some people would argue that Hong Kong is not really a part of China or yeah. whatever historically. It's it's worth the study. Yeah. Shenzhen. What's what's important about Shenzhen? Because so, it's literally like a border gate away. Yes. So. Understanding Shanghai and understanding Shenzhen is important to understanding how China turned things around. Did you guys go to Shenzhen? No, no, no. I'm going there myself. Oh, I'm on, okay. I want to go to Shenzhen and uh, Guangdong and the other places. Did right? you go to Guangzhou? No. That's, okay. Those are the same. Those are other places that I want to go to, right? Sure. Um, and what you understand is that China created, they truly maximized in their, in their understanding of the duality that exists with the capitalist system. They said, we will be socialist and people first at home, but with the rest of the world, we will work with their system, which is capitalism, Boom. to create wealth for our people at home. Boom. This, they didn't say, they said, we will control ourselves. We will make sure that Abandu have, have have a path forward. Mm -hmm. But when we trade with the world, we will trade on their terms. Because China, China doesn't trade on their own terms with the world. They created money the same way that everybody creates money. But they also managed to pull out 100 million people from poverty in 40 years. That's also what they did. So for people that need to understand, the maximization of special economic zones was part of that plan. Where they said to themselves, we will create zones where our socialist policies may be a hindrance to us progressing. We will create these zones and offer a different way of life that links to the outside world. We will take what is what the world is doing really well and is creating prosperity for Abandu in those in that world, and we'll put it into China. We're not going to be we're not going to be sitting here and saying, "Ah, yes, Funi and Zalando because it's done somewhere else." We're going to see how do we plug into the already running machine that is the global capitalist system. So they created the Shenzhen's, they created the Shanghai's, they created all of these places that would plug into the rest of the world yeah. so that they could bring money into their economy and to ultimately grow and become the place that it is now, the preeminent power in the world. The the last time I checked, Silicon Valley was the software capital of the world. Uh, I don't know if about Google and about Facebook and all those guys are still there, but it was the software capital. And Shenzhen was known as the hardware yes. capital of the world. The maker um, economy exists there. The, they make stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, they they, is, they like, make the like if you want to If you want to make a phone, yeah. so like, Shanghai is a phone today. Yeah. Today, it sends a phone. I'm like, Ube yako. Ube yako. brand. Ube, Ube pen what, what? phone. Correct. Today. So, and you can have a prototype by the end of this week, Espanai. Because you go to that guy, you fetch the software. You go to that guy, you fetch the chips. You go to that guy, yeah. you fetch the charging compartments. You go to that guy, you fetch the batteries. You go to that guy and you say, uh, I need uh, Bluetooth devices. Yeah. I, so you can make stuff there. And the, and the Americans know that they don't have that infrastructure. They, they, in Guangzhou, they do that now with things like clothing. It, where you can so literally brand. have your sneaker now with your name. And do you want Louis Vuitton branding? Do you want it to mimic 
on on the part about what they do within the country versus outside yeah um who i believe is the smartest guy i've heard on the internet naval ravikant set with joe rogan mm. on the joe rogan experience and he quoted nasim taleb and mm. i i like bring up this quote because it speaks to you use the term multipolarity within yeah, ourselves yeah multipolar world yeah so nasim taleb says and naval quotes him he says with my family mm. i am a communist mm. With my close friends, mm. I'm a socialist. Mm. At the state level of politics, I'm a Democrat. Mm. At higher levels, I'm a Republican. Mm. And at the federal levels, I'm a Libertarian. Mm. So never mind these terms and what yeah. they mean. But the bottom line is to say, one person, when someone yeah. says, I'm a capitalist, I'm a hardcore capitalist, mm. you'd almost want to interrogate, are you a capitalist with your children? Yes. With your family? Nah, yes. they all of a sudden, you believe in sharing information. Yes. Resources. No, my kids must get free this. My aunt, you're like, oh, so at some level. Mm. And the reason you are a capitalist, because I've reworked this thing and I've said something like to to close friends and family. Yeah. Uh, to close friends and family, you share values with. Yeah. You want to be a socialist. Yeah. I will share information. Yeah. I will tell you how these things work, where to get the money. Where, freely. freely. Yeah. Because I know you'll reciprocate yeah. it with those people you share values with. To every other stranger, be a capitalist. If yeah. someone's like, Pen, please help me with this, pay me. Yeah. To whoever else, please pay me. To, it costs this mm. amount of money. Mm. But to everyone who's within my circle or someone who shares value, yeah. I'm like, this guy has shared value with me freely. The least I can do is share value. And over time, mm. when there's sh- It'll go certain value exchange, yeah. I'm now, you are now officially my family. Yeah. And everything is everything I own. Yeah. You want a car, you want a place to sleep. I'm a bank you to you, know you are a bank to whatever me. Whatever you need yeah. is, is yours. So to everyone else, yeah, I'm uh, capitalist. To everyone else, boy, you so, will pay for. If you want to know where I stocked, I probably won't even fucking tell you where I stocked. I'll be like, so, I don't know. I also got it from a guy at a container in Durban. Like, <laughs> wow. So, so the interesting thing about what you're saying is that I also understand that I worked with uh, one of the sort of uh, I'd say struggle families, right? Yeah. And what was quite interesting is that in in one conversation with the guys and we're just chilling, the one guy said. I actually stopped counting how much money we owe each other here. There were about six or seven people. And then and then obviously it was it was like in that type of like flippant way. But they were like, that guy, I know I've I've given him 1.5 million. And someone said, but when Uncolo E 1.8, someone said, When are you owe me 300 k from what what? And they went, but they were like, ah, and then they started, they laughed about it and then sure. they, they they kept on, we kept on with the night. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Somebody succeeding within your your sphere of influence and ideology means that you now have another bank that exists and, and within you should all be your, succeeding yes that's, within that's where your, some of the with, within your community that's where some of the new money guys are getting it wrong yes people want to win on their own yes. and then tenderpreneurs when they fall you fall completely whereas if you'd actually created a circle it doesn't have to be family yes because sometimes by family i mean blood yes it doesn't have to be blood it's just common interest common values ideology where like, yes when I fall, say, like, hey, hey Baba, no, no, ah. you're good. Which, was, which is the Ubuntu principle. And yes. I've said, you can't practice Ubuntu with animals. And mm-hmm. by animals, I'm talking human beings. Yeah, You can't say, ah, Zima Saiba no Ubuntu just because you're milking me. Because of something You never me. reciprocated. Yes. So you have to practice Ubuntu with other people. Vusi Tembewayo said she spoke about Farkin, and I've seen the Jewish people do it. Yeah. Some of the Muslim communities here, also within their yeah. own little circles, like whatever you need. Yeah. But back in the day, bro, when your cows get stolen, whatever, yeah. I give you a bull, I give as you of, two as cows. Of, as of Vusa, your own. As of Vusa. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know if something happens to me, I will not go hungry. Yeah, exactly. What happens in South Africa, because we're multicultural, it becomes clear that it's us and them. Yes. It's the reason why certain people don't want to share information. Mm. It's the reason why certain people don't want to share resources. And I've said this to, again, I want to raise white people. If you will not let me, some people call it marry, mm. if you will not let me sleep with and procreate with your daughter, mm. there's no way you're non-racialist and there's no way you actually see me as an equal. Until you're comfortable to give me your prettiest, smartest daughter to sleep with and have children with, then I'll know we're ready now to actually Because you've actually gone to, on that level. to their most primal... It's the most primal. Yes. While you still have that look... Your family. Yeah. And now your cousin is eyeing my, hey, what's happening here? I'm not really comfortable. Yeah. You're like, oh, that means like yes, bricks. Yes. We're only here for the money. Yeah. You actually don't see me as family. Let's keep yeah. it professional. Yeah. Let's have the contract, but don't come and pretend like yeah. we're like that because we're not. Mm. But the day you're willing to be like, look, back in the day again, 
African families, the story of Romeo and Juliet, mm. it's, I will get the prettiest girl in my family. Mm. And it doesn't have to be you. It's strategic. But you will bring the greatest guy in your family it's and they will marry because now we are family. It's strategic. And, and that's the argument, I think, with why Ramaphosa had to marry a Mutsipe and why Chef Khatib had to marry a Mutsipe. I think they arranged marriages because it was like, if you go hungry, my sister goes hungry. Yeah. If you go hungry, my brother's now yeah. not eating. So, bro, you have a vested interest in us winning. And and the strategy behind that. So, just to close that loop on 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 China, I think the, the key takeaways is that a people-first society a true people first society actually exists in China mm. because there are checks and balances. The government cannot do what it thinks is right, but isn't right for people. Correct. It's not, it's not it's like, it's not a thing. And when I, and, and I want to say this to people that most people there, when you ask them about, there's so many cameras here, bro. Don't you feel like this is intrusive? They say, I'm not a bad person. Whether the government's looking at me, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, bro, because I'm not. What what is nefarious that I'm trying to do, right? But then the other people tell you no. But there's control there, and I say. And America complains about the surveillance in China, but here already when we started this conversation, Usi, remember, man, Siri was fucking listening. Uma <laughs> mele nango sharp sharp America Nick Rand. So, and 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 this was one of the key things that I saw. The other thing is that sheer force, sheer force of nature. If they decide we need to eat through that mountain, they go through it. Sheer force. They'll put whatever numbers of people they need to finish that mission. They'll say, we need to go through that mountain. We need to create a, a rail system through that mountain. And someone is sitting there doing the numbers and other person is saying, Sabantu, next thing you know, there's 100,000 people were going through that mountain. Is that Fuji Island? Fuji in Japan, there was that story I learned as a kid of people were like, yeah, you need to build the thing around the, it's like, why not just go through it? Mm. And they went yeah. through with some beautiful story of how they yeah. went through a mountain because yes. they're like I don't understand what we're doing here what and, are we trying to achieve we're trying to get there go through the fucking thing the thing is listen. oh the Afrikaner rugby players would love that yeah go, go, right, man. <laughs> stop fucking go through the this, man this goose stepping thing this is not fucking working dancing around you like you're scared of him fuck yeah. go straight <laughs> see ya yeah. Peter Steve go right, man <laughs> hey. hey so so that's that's the other thing sheer force of nature the other yeah. thing is that the Chinese are actually very, very much fluid when it comes to what, how they need to succeed relative to the global community. Mm. They they take the best from everywhere else. They are not scared to tell you that we went out and copied what was happening in the rest of the world, but yeah. we made it Chinese. Yeah, They're not scared. They remember, they went through a phase where everything walks to, hey, Fong Kong, Fong Kong. Of course. Yeah. Now, you understand? We've got a new right, car, by the way, called the Beijing that's he, lighting shit up. I think it's under Bake. I don't know if you pronounce it. Yeah, Bake. Yeah, Bike. Right? B-A-I-C. E-X-55. And it's being assembled by Kaber. Yeah, so, so people are going, Hammer the Chinese are what? Chief Kufula say Mr. Benz. And then good quality you, cars at a, at a we, lower cost than the incumbents. We ask you. Nifuna sitin. We are offering a solution. Yeah, hmm. a solution in a nibona e right for Tinangoku. What is the solution that you see? Because we are saying, not the solution, it's bricks. You are saying, but what if we choose what it's like we're going from one master to the other? Sitin, guys. Sitin, hmm. nifuna sitin, nifuna sitin, nifuna sitin. Offer the solution. If you believe we should be part of, uh, we should go to the hilt with another organization, Ibekan on the table, this bonus by organization is Nigandoni versus Le. And these are the simp these simple things. I want to shut down this conversation. Yeah. We've been talking for long. I haven't chowed. I've got a headache. <laughs> um, the last time you left here, I was left wanting us to chat for longer. You're here now. I want us to chat for longer. But you've become busy and you've become a celebrity of sorts as I well will. online. <laughs> um, so I hope we can do the trip to Shanghai. Yeah. Hopefully we can do Shanghai and Shenzhen at once. Maybe yeah. even Guangzhou and do yeah. three. Yeah. Um, and see if we can get uh, progressive people yeah. to come with because yeah. the the whole thing must be let's go have a good time but let's come back and I'm, see what I'm we can learn I'm highly intrigued in this in this in this trip and, and then I, the, I'm highly intrigued the second thing would be one way or another we need to create a platform where young progressive people meet up mm. and they keep tabs on each other they yeah. hold each other accountable and they're like let's build outside of the government yeah and maybe this will be our of uh, 
What's it called? Afrikaner bond, uh, broeder bond, Bro- the brotherly bond. And my hope would be for it to be non-racial, yeah. hopefully, but merit-based, like Dubai, and be like, guys, we passionate, we're young, let's do it. We want to create something really dope, whether here or on the continent or somewhere else. Do, do you not want to link do it with the kids in the Kenya? The year? Link with the kids in Nigeria and just give it a shot and say maybe we started. We didn't get anywhere, but yeah. the next generation of kids would be like, our parents started you with don't the wanna, relationships. You don't want to start it before the end of the year, like just one. One what? One gathering, a summit. No, 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 we can. Before the um, end of the year. We don't have to do a lot of people. So I was, when I was in Russia, yeah. uh, one of the things I said in my videos was, there's nothing stopping us online connecting. Yeah. Uh, we don't need a bricks. Yeah. We've got the internet. We yeah. can even use about Zoom and those yeah. things and be like, we want a, a YouTuber yeah. or a TikToker from Russia yeah. who is into politics or yeah. economy. Like-minded. And let's have a however regular online or yeah. physical. Can you host me? Can I sleep on your couch? Yes. Can you feed me noodles or whatever? I and like that. We don't need to wait to get yeah. to those levels because yeah. these some of these guys are old. Yeah. And you want to figure out now where are the young people of yeah. the future? Yeah. And you want to start already moving. Because there is, maybe a, there, even, there is know, a panel in Russia, yeah, in yeah. India. In China, yeah. right? In Iran. You shouldn't wait to be called up to the UN yes. if you like, in we've already got our In order for you to connect, right? Yeah. In order for you to want to connect with people. Yeah. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm putting this challenge uh, to, 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 us. To, to us to say, can we put maybe 200 people in a room? That's a lot right? of people. Yeah. Are you progressive South Africans. Yes. 200. We'll, we'll handpick them. Yes. Me and you. Yes. Let's, let's do it. Nepotism, right? Baba. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Newcastle. Newcastle. <laughs> no, I'm serious. This Newcastle you, delegation. You bring, you bring, a, you invite a hundred people. I invite a hundred people. We go and to look. Look, we can. I'll use my social media to try yes. and get suggestions. Same, same with me, well. right? Same and, with me. And let people be like, this is who we see and, as a. And let's let's have a, let's have a summit. I don't know what we're gonna call it. I don't know. And we'll we, come up with the name. And we charge no one. There's, we want you to freely give yeah. your expertise, your mind, and your time to this thing. Yeah. And we want we want to come up with a plan. Yes, I think maybe let's come solutions, up with a plan, a solutions-based summit where yeah. we don't want you to tell us just about the problem. We don't want you to stand there, touch mic, and say, "In my community, yeah. you need to say, "In my community, and I think that this could be a solution." What do you guys think? And we don't want to discuss politics and things nah. that are already discussed. We want to discuss solutions. The problems are already there. We can even table them. Solutions. Who is currently working? Yeah. What's out there? What needs to be scaled? What needs to be brought to market? And 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 people and people from there can network, right? Yeah, yeah. They can network. They can make sure that they can meet other people. We can freely share within this community that we create. Can freely share uh, details, emails, not numbers, but emails, so you can share ideas and say, "Hey, do you think this would work? Hey, do you think this would work sure. with the same people that are there? Two hundred people before the end of the year. Hundred, hundred. Thank you so much for coming Thank through, you. bro. Um, I don't know if we covered everything. Um, it's again, meal, you know us. We're I want to say thank you very much for your platform and your work. Like yeah. I said, you're the one person locally that's pushing me uh, without knocking anyone else because mm. people are pushing. Yeah. And they but, must push. No, no, they must definitely push. They must push. definitely push. Um, there's nothing stopping us from leading the continent. There's nothing stopping us from. And people need to understand w- we can summon uh, Biden, Putin, she, and be like, look, this is what we think. Yeah. Speak to us and we'll we'll see how we can make it work yeah. and, and sit with progressive people and build a better world where we respect people's way of doing things. Yes. And we look for the common interests. Yeah. As Briggs has said. And that and that's all we could ever really want for for the world, for people to yeah. have to have multipolarity, to have multiple choices, because even within us so live multi dating. Did you see <laughs> ah, I went, multipolarity. And within us have yeah. Because within us lies multipolarity, even in the decisions, the way we see the world, etc. But all that we need is that we need to agree on the framework with which, with within which we exist. That's it. Zimasa, Mustafa, Vabaza. Thank you so much for coming to sir. the panel show. Thank you, sir. Cheers.